All right, let me share screen number one. I left my glasses at school, so I have my backup ones, which aren't nearly as good, but I was in. Oh, you know what, Phil? I noticed that um, I uploaded just one more page. Um, okay, it's cool. not... well, that's all right. Did you get it up there? Yeah. Yeah, it's on there. Let me go get it. No worries. Thanks. Phil, I wanted to ask you earlier in last class, how much yeah. candy were you like left with after Halloween? <laughs> I have like a, I, I don't know if I told you, but my kids were pissed because I, when I went to the store with my wife, they had the chocolates and, and the chocolates were like $22 a pack. And I'm on budget. We just got a roof done, spent like, I don't know, 15 or 17 grand with all together. It was 25 grand because I had to get wood done. It's a lot of money. Right. So I'm like, let's get the bag of gummy bears and the sugar candies, not the chocolate that was on sale. The Costco was only 16 bucks. So my kids were all upset. They're like, couldn't get the chocolate, couldn't get the Reese's and the Hershey's and the Snickers. So today when I was at school, they had a bunch of that stuff out. Every All the teachers brought on their leftover candy I was in the office and I snagged all the, the Snickers and the Hershey's and I brought them home and gave them to my kids. So now I got gummy bears. And I got to be honest, I have Twizzlers. Man, the Twizzlers, like the licorice, they change your recipe. It tastes like plastic. It doesn't taste good anymore like it used to. So um, I have quite a bit of candy here. Um, do you want me to bring some? I have candy too. <laughs> bring it all. Bring it to the drawing event. We'll yeah. sit around, drink coffee, and eat candy. And then crash on a sugar high. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Like, kids don't pass by our neighborhood like they used to when I was small. Yeah. Go to, like, the rich area by my house so i'm just kind of, okay that's that's all good i guess i'll just try to devour the candy with my family for the next year <laughs> i hear you um yeah i know there's that sort of happened to here where i live it's just i live on a hill so people don't like walking up the hill so some people start on the hill and they walk down the hill to that street i told you guys called amberdale it's a mile long and they block off the streets. No one can drive. And all the parents are like drinking, having neighborhood parties. Just imagine a mile long street, just kids running up and down the street. Everyone, kids are getting candy. Parents are drinking. They're all hammered. And that's what, what everyone does in my neighborhood. They go down to Amberdale. So um, they come to our house for a little bit. And then, and then there's this one lady on the way. She's one of those houses that do the thing where they're like, they, they put out like fruit <laughs> and like no candy and like everyone tips over the bowl and knocks it we're like you communists we're the you know put some put some candy out they get all offended by it and everything you know so is my screen sharing it's not highlighting yeah it's sharing okay i hit the hot yep, keys it. i hit the hot keys and now it's not green anymore i don't know what happened so all right let's take a look here go backwards and Yeah, I noticed that too. We used to get a lot more kids and maybe the kids in my neighborhood just got, um, I don't know, maybe they got older. We just don't have as many as we used to. Mm -hmm. My kids didn't really do anything. They just went to did their own thing. So they're, you know, 16 and 17. They're not really doing any, they're 17 and 18. So they're not really doing anything anymore, you know? I miss the good old days of walking down the street with them with a couple other dads. We'd have a little cooler with some beer in it. We'd be drinking a couple IPAs. Kids would be getting candy. We'd check their bags, look at the kind of candy they had, you know. So, all right. Uh, Raphael, that looks really nice. Thank you. You could really push the light coming in this way too later. Yeah. You could, like, you, could you could just brighten that a little bit punch it with a fuzzy brush and then really intensify the light. And then you could hit this a little bit darker over here and a little bit darker over there. And it would, it'd be fine. It's less than like two minutes of work, you know? For sure. Are you stuck on that at all or no, that's just work in progress. 
yeah, it's just work in progress. If you'll notice, there's just like bits that are unfinished. Um, there's some elements that I like just temporarily took took off um, just to work on like the and stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, like there are those huge buckets that were pouring into that sort of like thing to the right. Yeah. That was in the older sketch and played hook hanging. And that was an old sketch, so I got to add those in. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And then the other image you put up here, there's some window designs? Yeah, just some like simple ones as uh, something that was like easy for me to to like warp and edit. Yeah, absolutely. To, to the perspective. Yeah, those are yeah. simple. They're well done. Yeah, they look good. Thanks. Right. Yeah, it looks great. It fit in there really nice right there. You know, looks quite nice. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Really fit in there good. It's going to be a good piece. That's going to be so much fun at the end when it's all uh, organics in there and broken apart and everything. You know what I mean? Mm hmm I mean, because you really get you get a before and after. And that I think that's going to look really great in a portfolio, too. And I would also recommend taking a couple of these parts, you know, like maybe taking this guy, maybe, you know, a couple of the arms, maybe that back area there and doing just a front and side orthographic view of them just to put in with your book. It just makes everything look that much better, you know? Oh, gotcha. OK. Yeah. I mean, you could do that. You're going to have to do it for this class, but whenever you want to do it, I'll be more than happy to look at it. Um, cause when you break those down, that's what you would do on a real production, especially if it was 3d, you, you, you give them this artwork, right. you do orthographics of a couple of the key parts, and then you'd blend that all together, you know? So there are orthographics, are they basically like turnarounds or? Yeah, that that's is? all it is. It's like a front and side okay. top view for a modeler. That's it. Gotcha. You know, it's okay. funny here. Let me show you this. I had this, I forgot who gave us this wonderful website. I'm in love with this website. Um, it's archive.org details. It's uh, the archive of all the art of books for free. And oh, nice. I'm looking at this character right here. Um, I'll give you guys the link. So I think Emily gave it to us last time. I opened it. It's fantastic. Um, and I was looking here. This, this is one of the characters for the art of, uh, the art of Book of Life. And mm -hmm. look at how nice. There's the orthographic view. There's the top view of the character. So everyone's pretty big about having that le level of detail. And it doesn't matter if it's with environments, with if it's with books, it's all part of that art process. So being able to mm -hmm. go in there, if we skip ahead and start going into some of the environments, you're going to see the same thing happening in here as well, you know? Um, yeah. That's yeah, nice. really great. So God, if you guys haven't heard of this, look at this. It's just a gold mine. And, oh, wait, and mine's some... a black screen. Oh, yeah. never mind. There it is. <laughs> you figure it out? Here, and these you. are these are like free downloads or they're not downloads but what are you these can do free? What are... they're oh. free to view but you can screen grab them so let me, let me oh cool it. hold on let me give you the link in the chat um it's pretty cool like look i opened the difference is, is the scan quality like look at the art of bolt that's a little larger and so look you could just take screen grabs someone flatten them all scan them see it's every book nice quite great right you know <laughs> cool yeah it's really wonderful yeah gives me some great ideas i was looking at this this great gave me the great idea for the narrative class of having a, a mom and dad concerned and a little kid and like a real weird looking monster in a cage at a pet store so I was writing down ideas for the narrative class. And one of my ideas was, was a, a pet, pet shop adoption, you know, think nice. of all the different angles you could do with that. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. A good way to like showcase emotion and story. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that was the original purpose of the narrative, but what happened the first time I offered the narrative, I got a bunch of people in the class that really didn't know anything about painting environments at all. So we spent more time, I sort of readjusted the class to focus on environments. That's when Taha was first in it. Now I'm going to go back in. And what we're going to basically do is a couple ideas. I might give you guys a couple. I'll give you reference sheets for characters. If, um, I might sketch something myself, and they'll be open use. If you're not a character designer, you could use them. And then we're just going to basically come up with a narrative. I'll tell you what the narrative is. Like one would be pet shop adoption, right? And, mm -hmm. then, and then you guys will sketch an idea for the environment. And then we'll we'll design the environment real quick, and then we'll place the characters, 
and then we'll basically go into like a pre-tone study and then go into a color study, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it definitely yeah. needs to be some, some sort of like a crash course into color theory for that one. Yeah. And, and some of it, that's what I plan to do. Some of it is actually what Paul is doing here on Paul Felix did a lot of this work. Um, a lot of this is really simple monochromatic. Like it's just adding mm -hmm. an overlay yellow of yellow uh, I see yeah. and then adding a little bit of blues at the end, a little bit of some other colors and you just keep it really simple. And if you do that, you'd be amazed at like the complexity and the quality of art that comes out from all this, you know? You teach it next semester? This time, yep, next semester. So I'm I'm well, open to fill it. I hope it doesn't get canceled, you know? So. Is it, what is it called? Um. It, it's called, uh, oh gosh, my brain just had a fart. Um, my brain just went blank for a minute. It's uh, <laughs> digital arts. Um, one, it's called narrative illustration. I forget the number, but I'll look Sweet. it up. I, I can give you the number in a couple. Hold on. Look it up real quick. It's in one of the newer classes I wrote. Um, give me a second. It's on Tuesday and Thursday nights. Um, give me a second. Let me go to the site here. Let me type in Fullerton College. And I really, we, we did some other assignments. Like we had a lake house assignment where you had to like have a house on a lake house. And then you had to have cars parked in front to tell a little bit of the story about the props connecting. So it's really about connecting props and characters to a storytelling aspect. And um, I, I've had a bunch of really great ideas I want to incorporate into it um chase sequence the the adoption no. um i've had a couple other ones like i had another idea the other day i might do it myself about a like a little kid and then his like animal like cooking and making a giant mess in the kitchen and the parents come home you know what i mean like stuff like that um and uh little things like all kinds of fun stuff like that so but, but the only problem is usually we can only cram in four assignments in the semester so what I might do, since it's next semester, if you guys are interested, I might do something for free over the winter break to promote it, or we start sketching and getting involved with it in the winter break. Does that make sense? If you guys are interested, it gives you a chance to create environments and characters in a storytelling visual development environment. That was the purpose of the class. And and if it, I think it's going to go really well because I have it. I am already planning out how to teach it, and I'm going to be doing some demos for it. Um, then I'm going to get those demos ready to start handing out. And uh, over sort of like part of the winter break, I'm going to get them all done. So when the semester starts, we'll be ready just to take it and, and run with it. So give me one second. Um, hey Phil, do you know just off the top of your head, like around what time slot that class is going to be? Yeah, it's the same one as this one. Oh, okay. awesome. I do oh, it. Yeah. I, I like doing, I have three classes I rotate. This class, because um, I can do them all as online classes. This class, the the narrative illustration class, and uh, hold on a minute. Let me give you the number. I always mix up the numbers in my head. It's been a long day. Um, I don't see the number up there. I'll find it in a minute. I'll get it for you a little bit later. My brain's a little wrecked out from meetings all day. So um, I'll just look it up on curriculum if we take a little break. Anyway, um, hold on. And I was, I need to stop the share. I was going to give you guys that link to the PDF site. And it, the, the chat room isn't opening. Oh, there it is. Let me move it. Okay, now I got it back up. Paste. There it is. There's that link. Click that link, you guys. It's a great site. Technically, you could open it, full screen it, and just take JPEGs. If you decide to do that, email me. Let me what book, know what book you're going to make a PDF of, and then I'll make a PDF, and then we could all sort of share them. So um, I was going to do Bolt. There's really great story points in Bolt, you know. So, yeah. That's pretty fantastic. There's some good stuff in there. All right. Um, good job, Raphael. I'll, I'll Thank you, Phil. I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about what I'm thinking about doing because I've had a lot of good ideas and I really want to push that class because I think the class will really take. And if it takes the way I want it to take and go, it's something I want to then 
to start, I'm going to write two or three more of them to have four of them total. And my goal is, is by like 2025, because it takes that long to go through state curriculum, because we're already in 23 going to 24. So anything I put in won't be ready till fall of 25, which will go by quickly. My goal is to have four of those classes every, every Tuesday night. And I'm just going to teach every Tuesday, Thursday night from this day forward. I'm going to make that like a staple. That way I can try to attract people from the industry, other background artists, and so on. That's my goal. So I want to rotate. And then I'm adding on two more environment sketch, excuse me, two more environment sketching classes to the environment group. So I'm going to make those online classes as well. So when I want, I can rotate them. My, my goal is to try to be on campus Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in the mornings. And then I'll be home at evenings teaching, you know, so yeah. All right, cool. Will, hi. What'd you do here? We already had an idea for you. Crap, I don't know. We we spent all that time. I did a huge demo we on did. your piece. It looked great. We did, we did. I'm sorry, my I for I can't believe did I forgot. You forget about oh, it. That's all I right. Did, yeah, no, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. Um, you're you already you don't have to go into all this direction. You already did something that's quite similar to this. Um, and I gave you an idea for it that you could add to it and expand off of, you know? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. You don't have to be sorry. Hey, man, it's been a crazy week. It, this is that time of, of year. Cause I can tell you right now, my brain, I can't even remember the class I'm going to teach the number. And I've been in meetings all day. You guys are busy. You're working, you're taking classes. You have parents, everyone got out of light box. I've noticed this week that everybody's like mentally exhausted, you know? And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So um, if I was you, you already had a great piece that would work well, I would just go back into that and you could probably adapt. It's very similar to this piece you did here. So, um, okay. I just develop that and go from there, buddy. And then if you work on it this week and you want to show it to me, I'd be more than happy to take a look at it on Friday or Saturday. Okay. Okay. All right. And if you, if you, if you look at it and go, I don't like that, you want to go back to this, then I would go into this direction and I would I would flush that out a little bit more. OK. OK. All right. Good job, Will. Thank you. Sure. Do no worries, buddy. Trying to shake off the shake off the uh, brain worms. Hey, you, I, buddy, you have no idea, man. I. Th as people, well, there are so many things that we do. In fact, you know, I, I just got a, an email from a student that was late in one of my classes because they have a family member that fell and got hurt. And it's like, we have, there's so much stress going on sometimes. And I, I, I love our classes, but then sometimes that it piles up really quickly, especially I've noticed everyone that was in light box is either coming back sick out of it where they need sleep, they need rest or trying to get caught up. So I, I, you know what, I was almost tempted to say, everyone just take off, you know, Thursday, you know, and everyone just have a day off and work on their stuff. We'll have a power crit Tuesday, but I decided to come in. I figured if we end early, I'll just let you guys go and you can go rest, take a break. I'm the same way, man. I'm like so stressed out right now. You have no idea. Tomorrow I have, this is how my life is going, right? My wife is happy. She goes, she said she had a horrible day at work. So she goes, I'm happy we're off tomorrow. We get to relax. And I'm all, um, you get to relax. Tomorrow I get a call from City Hall, City of Yorba Linda. They're sending an inspector to come by in a two hour window to inspect my roof that was done to see if I pass inspection. Then I have an, an auto insurance adjuster coming by to look at my trailer, my camping trailer that the frame is bending to see if they're going to scrap it. Okay. Then it, then I got contacted by that publisher again, who called me back, who wants to meet with me, who the one I said, if we, if I'll do something with you, but we'll do it 50, 50. And so she wants to have a meeting with me. And then after that, I have a meeting with two students. After I'm done with that, I'm going to try to go to the gym for an hour and a half. Okay. Um, maybe I'll get to have lunch with my wife real quick. Then I got to go to school and then I have to get ready. Then I have uh, to be there early and then I have the drawing event. And then by the time I'm all done, by the end of Friday, it's it'll be I'll be home at 10 p.m. So that's my Friday wrapped up in a bubble. That's my day off. Oh, and I forgot. I have the drawing event from 930 in the morning till 11 too, to put the icing on the cake. So, um, yeah, it's like a slam packed day and Fridays are my day off, you know, so. But I love getting to, to do the drawing thing. I get I love getting to, you know, the meetings and all this other stuff. It's cool stuff, you know. 
it just racks your brain a little bit when there's so much going on, you know? So um, no worries, buddy. You're fine. Um, Vivian. Okay. I know that tip is off, but I'm just trying to put um, everything in it, not make it look so empty. Yeah. All, all we got to do is just get like one nice, sweet focal point, like right there. You know? Yeah, I'm going to add more to that. So um, I just wanted to get it approved so that I can start like adding more crap into it and <laughs> fixing I like the perspective. Your, I like your flagrant honesty of crap, you know? <laughs> just going to get more crap into it. Um, so you have a vanishing point there. Yes, I do. Be Make sure these lines are matching up correctly so you don't spend extra time because that line right now is going like that. And that's not adhering to this line over here. You see that? Oh no, yeah. For no, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. I just uh, I was picking apart the first piece and just putting everything in there just to see how it looked. Okay. Now here's the thing you're doing, which is you're designing big. You're you're in a rough designing big. I would shrink it down, put three on a page, and just sketch a couple of different ideas here. Maybe there's a molten lava thing here. Maybe it's tilting over. Maybe there's a large container here. Maybe there's pumps that go to it. Um, you know, maybe there's a large grate. Maybe there's a large canister here. Maybe there's pipes that come in from the ceiling. Maybe there's that walkway ladder here and there's a computer and they're overseeing it. I, I would, because if you don't do that, you're gonna end up sort of building this in pieces, 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 pieces. And in this point of view, with all these angles in here, your focal point that needs to be established before anything else is all of this needs to really read and be very impactful. And um, what's happening is if you're designing, plugging other stuff around, you're, you, you need to design from the focal point sort of out a little bit, if that makes sense. Um, in this piece, that focal point has to be the prime read or else you're going to look here here, here, and here, and your eye's not going to know where to rest, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Okay, so are you just saying that I should start focusing on the middle now? Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't I would even, this is filler. That's secondary. You can knock that out in minutes. What's important is, you know, is this going to be this giant thing that's being turned? Is there lava coming out of it? How does stuff get in there? You know, so maybe... We, maybe we, we need to incorporate a claw that's dropping stuff. Maybe Wait, then, that idea. That's a really good idea. And then if we put a claw, that means the claw has to be on a rack system that might move it somehow in and out of the piece. So then you have to think about that. Maybe the claw comes down lower. Maybe there's canisters here where it fills. And then, then you need to start thinking like, okay, is there a, a large square thing here? stuff's falling into it is there a you know a large grate in front of this are there large um step angled areas like this that have like pumping pipes that pump liquid and stuff over to there to cool it down you know um you got to really start building this area maybe here there's a giant a really giant looks like an oil canister but you know maybe it's with like a pump station with other stuff in it and fluid see we got it and then that's just a thumbnail so my concern is is i would shrink these down do like three or four of them and get the best one that's looking the best and then build off of that one i would treat them as is a piece of paper with four thumbnails <laughs> and i would go in there and design the middle and whichever middle starts to look the best i would take that one and go off of it what you're doing is sort of ditching the thumbnail you're working full size, 11 by 17, and you're building it as you go. And that takes four times the amount of time than it does to do the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. I go back, mm -hmm. always go back to thumbnail. Think big, design small. Never leave it. Just stay simple. Okay? Okay, thank you. <laughs> if you get stuck, I will be around this weekend. <laughs> Let me know and I can jump on Zoom to help you, okay? Okay, thank you.
All right, you're welcome. I'm gonna get that answer before we change here. Trying to talk about a class of mine and I can't even remember. I forgot the name of the class, it's been such a long day. If you come here, <coughs> I also needed to mention this to you guys too. Do not look at, when you come up here, you click catalog and schedule. Don't click on this right here. It's layered with mistakes and problems. Click on the online schedule. That there's errors with the days, the times. Uh, so click on spring 2024, Fullerton College. Do art and dart separate. So the class I'll be teaching is a dart class. There it is. And then just hit search. I think it was 140. So if we scroll through all the darts and we get down to here at the bottom. There it is. It's Dart 148, Introduction to Narrative Illustration. And I'm going to write a 149 and a 150 if I can next, because I don't think there's other classes in that area yet. I'm going to add to it. All right. So that's the one. Um, yeah. OK. All right, cool. So Dart 148. All right, let's take a look at the next piece here. It's, a, it's great because we get to combine characters in, and do more development style work, but we're still doing environments too. Environments can be a secondary part to it that allow us to keep working. Um, Vivian, if I get through the rest of these and have time, I might come back and pull up your piece and sketch on it like a thumbnail. Please okay. do. And we can just maybe solidify some of that tonight. All right, Latoya. Okay. Um, let me see here. I like this. I'm not sure. I think this is supposed to be a conveyor belt. Um. Is that right? Actually, I don't know. It kind of looked like a weird tire thing. And <laughs> yeah. I was trying to find more videos on it. And you're trying to figure it out, huh? Yeah. You're like, what's it going to turn into? Um, OK, you have an idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select this, copy this. So one of the things that's happening is that you have this large item here. And it literally divides your whole page. You see that? Mm, yeah it sort of splits this side to that side mm -hmm. but there's a fix to that and there's a problem with that is that one of the problems is when we look at this piece this is interesting but this surpasses it okay. that's, a be that's a better grouping that's mm -hmm. a more interesting shape there so what we can do is we can shift part of this okay if we go to new here come into 11 by 17 paste your work in here. Like we could pull your image over like this. And that, you're right, that tire thing will have to be sort of resolved a little bit and figured out. If it's something that's too hard to understand, what I always tell my students to do is let it go, simplify. Don't worry about dragging it out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's that old ex expression, Claire? You can't don't don't hit a dead horse with a, a dead cat with a stick or whatever. No, stop it, Phil. <laughs> no, it's a dead horse. I'm sorry. Can't beat a dead horse. Yeah, you can't beat a dead horse with a stick, right? Because it's already dead. Nothing's gonna happen to it. It ain't gonna move. Um so <laughs> what we need to do is we need to make this area here become the visual read and make that the most important thing. So this is great, though. I love how you have the little conveyor belt that's coming down. The problem is, is that this is literally that high above the ground. You see it? Mm -hmm. So I know you're thinking of it maybe like it's a, a ground conveyor belt or something. Um, 
that could be an issue that it's so low to the ground there. Because if you get that in here, depending upon what it looks like, let's go check your vanishing points real quick. Let's establish those. Right there. So we have one way back here off the page. Good job keeping that further away. So here might be a little issue that you might have is technically your horizon line's about right here in your piece, mm -hmm. okay? The problem you have is that this other vanishing point is right here. You see it? Yeah, yeah. And that's literally inside the picture frame and that matches up to there. The problem with that is, is that we basically can't, and here's the perspective problem you're gonna start to have. Once you start to draw anything past that point, it has to go to a new point. And then when you got to these, you're going to end up making these all parallel. And then eventually mm. that's going to throw off the drawing. So that's mm -hmm. probably something you were starting to struggle with where you're like, man, why, why is it not looking right? Or what is it feeling right? That's probably the number one problem. Is it to, in two point, you really want to get those vanishing points really pulled out from each other. Okay. okay. Um, I know you got thrown into this, you got into this class. Next semester, I want you to take my perspective class. Okay. And, okay. and even if, even though it says in person, I also do the Zoom thing. If you're far away and you can't drive in, you can do it all. Oh, the okay. All my classes that say, even if they say in person, I still offer Zoom because I have students that live in San Diego. Uh, Viviana lives like up in Burbank and Glendale. I'm not going to make someone drive all the way in when they're really far like that. You know what I mean? I have students in Berkeley. So I tr I promote my my classes all over California, and if someone takes them and they're far, I'm not going to make them come in. I record the lectures for every one of them. I upload them. So that's a benefit for you if you didn't know that. Okay. Okay, I'm not um, far, and uh, I just don't know my schedule. Yeah, that's okay. So even if like if someone goes me tells me Phil I have to work, all I tell them is like Alexander's had to work before, and I tell them like just submit the work to me, and get the work to me. And then do the homework and don't fall behind and you will be okay. And I'll let you do the whole class online. So oh, okay. um, there's a way that we can sort of fix this. What we have to do is we really have to come further out here. And we have to pull that. Oops. Photoshop is so bad. Today, the, the straight line option wouldn't work. It was driving me nuts. So if I start to angle this a little bit and go really far out to about there. It's, hold on, I'm trying to get it in. You can't get it to fit. We're going to change your angle from there to about there, which isn't much. And then when you get to the van closer to the rise line, it actually is very less. It only changes drastically when we go really high above or below. Okay. And if we do that, and your wall is barely going to change at all. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. But now by having that point out, it's, it's going to change this, though, and it's going to change this. But now by having that out, see, you have that ability to continue that that belt going out mm -hmm. because the point's going to be further out. If I was you, I like the layout of your room. You have this sort of cool room. It's like this. You have a point a couple inches off the screen here, and you have this long wall here. What I would do if I was you is I would come in here and erase this. I put a frame line in there just for you to see. And I would make it go a little bit taller up to about here, because that way you now have the ability to get in here and have a really nice framing window of some kind that goes up the side of the wall, you know? And that's going to be a benefit for you in terms of lighting and having things come in and out with the growth of the plants and all that stuff. And it could be a squared window, heck, if you wanted to. You could arc it too and put an arch, whatever you want to do. And, and just doing this, it's going to open up the whole entire room quite a bit very quickly because it gives you a little bit more freedom to get in there. And now you're starting to get like that becomes like a focal point with the window. And then you have this really nice, this stuff is looking really cool right here. So I might take this, expand off of this. 
I like this shape here, but this shape could easily just be on the left-hand side. It's not necessarily part of your focal point is going to be lined up in the middle here. Like, and if I come back to this vanishing point, going back out this way, if that makes sense. You see that? Mm -hmm. That could become part of your focal point. Or if you, we got rid of the window, you could do the same principle with this side here, where this extends out more. And that extends out and you widen your frame like this. You have this becomes a really nice area with a focal point and a bunch of stuff there too. Um, okay. So you, you can sort of build that room and then build off of that. This guy is cool, but see, you need to figure out, there's lots of things you got to do. We got to figure out like, we got to get the lips in there. Then we got to figure out what does it do? Does it come up? Does it have stuff that connects? like other stuff you know is there pipes is there um maybe there's like part of another like giant canister connected to this i mean this mm -hmm. i could make that the focal point no problem we just put a bunch of stuff there and make it look really really important you know you could have it could be tubes and wires that comes down into here this thing can be like an industry thing that like moves and pumps and shoots stuff out and maybe it is landing there but then you got to start thinking about well what does it do is it pumping stuff out? And then I see how it drops, but then you might need to bring that drop thing a little bit higher like this. And then maybe there is, you know, we come back to that vanishing point. Maybe there is a conveyor belt. Maybe that conveyor belt goes this way. But oops, one of the problems with a conveyor belt is, is it covers everything else in the location. Mm -hmm. And conveyor belts tend to look better when they're used as foreground or when they're used in the very background. When you put them in the mid-ground, they tend to cover everything up and they're a lot harder to work with and to use. So you see now how you can have this like conveyor belt that's going down. Heck, it could even round and turn. The problem is, is it's all overlapping the mid-ground and that's why it would sort of take it out. I think that'll be okay. a bad idea to have it in there. Now, eventually, if you wanted to have something coming in here or whatever, you could do that. So there's a couple options that we could do. You could really... You could change this stand and you can make it look like, you know, there could basically, if you're looking at your horizon line, you could have a large vat. Heck, it could be some type of a surface, a lid. That lid might be able to even open up. Maybe it slides in there somehow. You could have a large vat shape here. What you could do is find the center line of that object, come back here to this vanishing point, and then you can start building your room off of that line right there. Okay. So that line, that's about the center. Let me redo that line. So if I come here and we pick, that's about the center line and it goes this way. That means this object here needs to end about here on there to be in alignment with that. And then we can draw lines around it and start building a whole center area of your factory like that. See that? Mm -hmm. If I draw lines going this way, and keep that shape you have, keep this other shape here, and then start thinking about, okay, maybe there's a little, I don't know, maybe there's a side to this that opens, maybe it, it there's a pour mouth that comes out, maybe when it pours, there's like an angled thing that catches it, and then maybe it drops down, and then maybe here now, now I'm by the foreground, right? Now I can put a conveyor belt here, you know, and maybe there's a conveyor belt, oops, it goes this way and catches stuff. Maybe there's like a a thing here that comes up and over and it has little sprayers on it, you know? Let me get back on the horizon line, vanishing point. And there's sprayers in there and it sprays whatever. So this thing pours something, maybe it goes through this machine and then this machine can do like what we were doing here. We were building these little parts off of it. We were coming up. Maybe there's piping that comes here. Let's hold on a minute. I'm going to put a measuring line here because I can't see anything. That VP is a little further. So I want to see its angles. So I'm just drawing lines from that vanishing point. All right. And then I could come back to here. 
And the center of that actually is going to be over a little bit. So I could have another tube come out of there and come this way. And maybe over here, I have another tube connection to that. You see how that starts to become the focal point real quick? Yeah, I do. Because that becomes like the biggest area of detail and interest. The other point, I'll just put it right there. So then we have a tube comes out of here. That. Um, and there's all kinds of things. I mean, you get away. That's a great thing sort of about animation is that you can get away with almost anything you can think of. So I could come over here and go, oh, I like that idea. I want another, give me another tube element that's pumping stuff into that. So I might decide to come here and go, okay, let's put a large, maybe there's another round container here. And it, and it has a big belt around it. And it hangs from like the ceiling type of thing. And then maybe this thing, so maybe I erase some of this. Maybe this thing comes down a little bit. Just to a point. And then there's a tube that comes out of that. And then that intersects here instead. All right? And then maybe there's a tube we see comes down behind it. And then when that tube goes to turn, it's then going to come down like this and angle back into the side, the other side, the back side. Okay, so you got tubes going in all these directions. Um, hold on a minute. Now I feel like changing that. And if I come back, check your, your horizon line, your lines here on the left, that angle right in there is going to be about right here. So I'm matching up right there. You see that? So if I match that up, I'm going to go a little notch lower. It might bring that other tube coming out here. So that's going away from me. And when it hits this object here, this might be another. It's weird. I'm drawing lines and nothing's coming out. There it goes. I'm going for the big shapes, the big reeds. If I put something else behind this that comes down, even larger on the ceiling, I'm going to have a pretty large lips there because I'm a good distance away from the top. And all of a sudden, now you know where your focal point is, right? Yeah, definitely okay. do. Because it's there. It's the biggest, most interesting thing, right? Yeah. And you just continue building your factory this way with your other stuff. Come back in here and you, you put that stuff there. And then I really like this idea. You're already doing like a walkway up here, right? So we got to fix that walkway in the perspective. Might angle off a little bit more. Maybe, maybe you decide. One of the things I was talking about on last night's class when we met was what if there's a walkway here, like a railing? And what if the boss's window is right here? Because I actually had to do that in the show once. I had the boss's window up high, overlooking part of the factory floor. This. Hold on, I'm way off on my angles there. This should be a lot higher, and then that should be curving lower. Like that, so you could have a window there, and then you can put like these cool decorations around part of that window, and then you could have these lines like accentuating part of that that fuel. You can put a little trim in here, overlooking, and now it's like now that window helps reinforce everything else in there, right? I'm taking your conveyor belt idea. I'm going to keep that there. Maybe even somewhere over here. Maybe we get to see the conveyor belt again. So I'm going to take that other idea that you had and work on that for a minute. Maybe we see um, back over here, maybe we see the conveyor belt come back this way into the piece. 
maybe it's bringing um then maybe it's bringing stuff into a some type of a heat oven or, or a curing oven right oops it's off let me fix that real quick as if we match that up to the vp going from here to there it'd be about that distance so it hit about there you just put a little foil thing over it maybe there's a little thing here so then we can see it then when we see it go in there maybe we see these like heat rods you know on the top here and stuff so then maybe it's making chunks of i don't know steel or hershey kisses who knows what it's making you know what i mean and they're going in there and it's being heated so this is some type of a really cool heat contraption you know maybe it comes in here and then it comes up another notch This starts to angle back to the VP, right? See, that's what I mean by if we can keep your 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 conveyor belt in the foreground or in the background, it tends to work better. And then maybe we come over here and maybe we decide to put, to emphasize this focal point, right? Maybe we make a couple things we could do. What if I come in here and I make a grate around it so I could have light coming up? Maybe um, where this area ended in here, Maybe it ends, ended a little bit earlier. Maybe this grate comes out a little bit more like this. Right, and then now we have a big mixing machine. Heck, this thing could be see-through and it can, you can see like these big blades on it, you know what I mean? Like this, and you can see it mixing, maybe it mixes metal or something that cools some type of aluminum that gets pumped into the other metal and it makes these parts, right? And then we can, you can still come in here and do something really cool like an elevated platform. So you could come into here, and if you find the center line of your factory, let's say it's about there, coming through, you know, it'd be about probably about here. So if I come into there, but if I come back a little bit, about to there, and then I elevate something. So I'm going to come in here, erase this, and I'm going to have a working platform of some kind. So there might be here, and then it'll go back this way towards your vanishing point. And maybe there's like a big computer screen, another screen. Maybe there's a chair here that somebody monitors that machine and they're always on shift, right? Um, maybe there's another monitor in the back, something here behind them. Um, if you wanted to, you could have that open. You could have the stairs coming out there, going down. So we see that that's open. We see the chair in there. See how it's working now all of a sudden? I do. It just sort of comes together. And, and if if you just focus everything to this focal point, that is the biggest, most interesting shape. So I always think of reads this simple. One, twos, and threes. That's it. That's all you need. That's read number one. Okay. And then this area, whatever you do here, that becomes read number two. And then everything else is filler. That's a third. That's a tertiary item. Uh, well, under there is a tertiary item. Nobody cares about it. It's just the filler detail. To get you focused on everything else. Okay. Okay. So take a picture of that and work on that. If you get stuck on it, let me know and I can jump on um, Saturday or Sunday to help you out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. All right. And don't, I don't want you to feel frustrated because I know that feeling. When I was, when I first got out of school at Cal State Fullerton, I went and took a class with a character designer. This guy named Chris Aguirre. And man, I got my ass kicked. I got my ass handed <laughs> to me. Like, I, I couldn't do anything. Like, I didn't really know anything about structure, shape, or form. I, I was weak. And and then he even told me, he goes, man, you, this isn't really your, your, your class, your thing. I had to go back and, like, retrain, reapply. It took me almost a good semester to a year to really get my brain thinking in terms of animation, which is about 
shape, visual reads. It's all about old film mm -hmm. knowledge coming back, you know? And then yeah. I got better. So don't feel frustrated. Just do your best to try to overcome. And if you get knocked down, just get back up and keep, you've been, your other pieces are looking great. So just keep focusing yourself, keep applying, and then take that perspective class. And then I'd be like, man, why didn't I take this first, right? <laughs> I, well, most of the people in this class have already had that. And they've already had environment sketching with me. So they've had me for like a year and they already know all that stuff. And then they keep coming back for more pain and suffering, you know? <laughs> so, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. All right. Carlos. Hello, Phil. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm trying to get over a cough, cold. I've been all right. I'm hanging in there. Good. I know people have been sick and everything. So you have you, you have the start to a good focal point here, right? Okay. Okay. This is interesting to it too. What I noticed is this area has a lot of detail and it's almost the same size as that, and they sort of compete against each other. Mm-hmm. And so what you have is you sort of have a, a factory split into three parts. Mm. You have the middle part, the front, and then the back, the far left. Um, we could change that by doing a couple things. If we start to overlap stuff on top of each other, it'll create a lot more distance inside your piece. Um, if we emphasize this area with what you have over here, that'll read even better. And then hmm. this can, can fade off. No one even cares about it. Yeah. This is a great console. The problem is it has all the detail. So my eye goes right back over to here every time. You know? Mm -hmm. Now, what you could do, there's a couple ideas, is that if you had, like, right here, something, number one, we're, we're cutting off part of the frame here. So I would really consider opening this up so you could get access to some windows or something on the wall. Okay. okay. Uh, number two, you could take some of this detail and here you're starting to do it very nice. We can get these controls around this center mass somehow. And there's a, here's hmm. a couple ideas. One would be literally, let me back up here. I know that's a railing there to walk by, right? Mm -hmm. But you could easily come in here. And have some chairs here. And widen this out like they're controlling what's in front of them, the experiments right in front of them. You know what I mean? Oh, cool. So the 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 control station, instead of being separate, it could be attached to it directly. Yeah, like here's the rail that walks. And then when they get yeah. there, this extends out a little bit and jets out a little. And that's literally them working right there, controlling everything. So now you have all oh, these no. controls overlapping that. So you're doing overlap. And then you see that they're controlling that. And then you don't even need that anymore. Ooh, that becomes part point. of your focal point, you know. Then you come in here and part, you could do lots of things. You could come back over here on that rail. I know you have all that good detail in there. Be careful. These are very similar to each other. Mm -hmm. um, some of those shapes you could put, we could emphasize this. I like, But I like those vats, though. Those vats are cool, like they're bubbling with stuff. I almost want to come back in here like that's a line on the vat. I don't want to do that. And put like, <laughs> like goo in there, you know what I mean? In there. Um, and then what we could do, hold on a minute. I like that idea. Um, 
Um, let me reestablish your, hold on, let me find your VPs real quick before I forget. Um, just to make sure you have, Yeah, I know I'm trying to get to that. Huh. I know what's with my Cintiq. I'm like trying to draw lines, like nothing comes out thin. You have technically your horizon lines like up high, right? Yeah. It's sort of because look, you gotta watch this. See that? That top of your thing there's oh like yeah that. yeah that's out of perspective yeah that's a teeny bit out because i'm seeing your wall line go this way uh -huh. to a point and then technically this is the straightest line in your piece right there uh -huh. so you have a vp way off to the right side which is fine and then your other vp is right here in the frame like this um that could be that's good that's okay for now Let's see if we can work around that. So what I was thinking is by putting that block there and by putting that your your factory stuff there, this uh -huh. see how all that works in harmony now together? Yeah. And then you could just come in here. There's two things I would want to do in this piece. One, I like the angled background you have there, but I think it's also going to be important for you to have some type of a window in this structure eventually. Oh, nice. Because the window is what trees and all that stuff is going to be able to grow out of, right? I just got, we just got to figure out how to fit it in there. Um, it, and it doesn't have to be a rounded window. It could just be a square top window. Um, mm -hmm. And this is what I was thinking. I was thinking of just coming back to your VP over here. And just like, I like this idea. There's like a walkway going here. Connects to that walkway. And maybe there's just, you know, this plethora of like pipes that come down. So maybe a pipe comes down here. And if that center line is above there, that means that would be the base for it. So you might, this might be something that's just sort of ending in about here. And then you might have back down here behind this. Be some other shapes in the back there. You don't even need to go past that, you know. Yeah, I was, uh, that's what I was starting to see when you started to draw the all the circles and the cylinders. I was like, well, maybe I can frame it to be thinner, not so wide. Yeah, because it, you don't want to taller. go past that anyway because you're past your VP. And if you keep going past that, you're going to go out of your cone of vision, right? Yeah, and then I have to put another VP. and then Exactly, all... and then it creates a headache and it's not worth it. Yeah, it gets all wonky. That's right. So if we put that large cylinder there, and now we're going to have some fun in a minute with Let's just figure out we got that. We got the walkway. Maybe back here we put a there's you know a little electric light and doorway in the back of the factory, you know. Maybe there's rails. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A wall like that or something, you know. You see oh, yeah. that that wall ends. And then hold on a minute. And then here I want to do something to overlap this. So I'm thinking from that VP, there's a couple things we could do. Could I have one idea? Let me put this on another layer. Just wondering, this could be good or bad. What if there's an elevated walkway above? Actually, what's funny is your 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 piece could start to go into a little three point. Oh, cool! Very lightly, like this. So 
you could get here at the little rail. And that's right on the vanishing point, but we could still get I don't like that. It become way too busy. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to do another idea then. Let's huh. put. I have a better idea. We'll we'll hang. We'll put other stuff down here, and then we'll we'll block it with some pipes and stuff. Overlap is your friend here. You know, mm. right? So all these pipes are kind of coming at us. They're kind of facing yeah, like, like exactly. Yeah. So it's pushing back to us. It allows the viewer to then spin back. You know. Oh, interesting. Um, and then hold on a minute. So you're you're using the shape language to push the viewer. Back. Over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, and I'm seeing. Here, that I right want now. to curve a pipe this way, back oh. in this way towards your VP. then we'll overlap that. Maybe that comes over here down to the floor. And connects to the floor. And then pushing this back this way, maybe we have another squared. Element like this, just a square thing that connects to that somehow, you know? Yeah. Okay, so now your eye comes here and then it circles back in and you push back into the piece. And it mm. takes you to that door back there too. But do you see where your control area is now? Yes, yes. I and like what I know. would do is, I like this large shape, but I'm not a fan of that thing. Uh -huh. What I would do is this. I would take a line, find, here's your center. Bring a line down this way and bring a shape going in the other direction like this. We're going to stick a cylinder right in there. So when that cylinder comes down, that's the center line of that cylinder. This is just going to overlap and wrap itself around like this. Mm -hmm. And then as that goes, then you're going to have that big window back there, right? Or just a little bit above your horizon line. Yeah. And then I would just come into this and put like rivets on this thing, have metal trim coming around this. Feels like it's holding the whole thing together, you know? And then and then just you could see give thickness to the walls by drawing interior lines like this. And then I would just have some type of like goo in there or something like it's cooking or baking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or even better than that, forget goo. They're all watching this with the nuclear symbols. Dude, you need to have like a, yeah, this is what you need. You need to, forget that idea. Forget the goo. You need to have Tesla stuff. You know what I mean? You need to have rods in there like this. You need to have a core of like a, a pink diamond or something or a blue diamond sitting on a bed with more Tesla coils on the side. So they're like shocking that thing and you're creating, you know what fission is? Yeah, yeah, fission you're energy. Fission, nuclear energy, that which we haven't figured out how to do. It's one of the things Tesla wanted to do. <laughs> told us to stay away from the other one because it's too deadly. And then that's like illuminating. And then then you can put a, if you have to put a tube coming off of that and landing into here, put that in there. And then just, heck, you could do, I love your tubes down there. This I would fortify. I'd make it larger with like rivets. Okay. It, yeah. Make it thick and heavy. And now there's no mistake in your focal point, right? Mm -mm. You're 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 locked in. Your eye goes, dude, you see these three, and you go to here and look at your center line. You go up, down, up, over, back, and up there, boom. That's your focal point. Mm -hmm. You know?
Wow. Very nice. And then you, you, you're going to resolve this. You need to open up. You can see the difference already, how much more interesting this drawing will start to become if you have window in there, right? Yeah. And you get some like cool little treatment or something around that window. Whatever. Or maybe yeah, a couple of windows. Or do you think it would be better to one one solid one to knit, to lock in the to kind of frame in the focal point? It sort of frames in the focal point a little bit. You know uh, what I mean? That's what I was thinking. I was like, well, maybe it'll frame it all in together. Like that. It sort of does a good job of just framing it in almost like that. You know, you don't think it's the same size as the the the, the tube thing in the middle that you started to tube on top of are the same thing. and that's why for a minute i thought about ooh, what if we get rid of this tube thing and what if there's another window on the side you know mm -hmm. yeah just to knock off the this yeah what yeah, if it's yeah. just really large there too and then you come up and then you have like factory girders or whatever but now you got it you're looking at framing your piece maybe about here like this you know yeah or even about here you could frame it very, very nice. But by doing that, it works now. Right? Yeah. And the other thing is you have enough. You did a good job with visual weight on the right. So this almost is at a three-quarter mark right there. It's a little bit off, but if you wanted to, you could pull the frame that way another inch, and then it would be the rule of thirds, too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but do you see the difference how all that works, you know? Absolutely. We just moved it around and hold on a minute. And before, now look at the fight happening. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. You got, that's, because they're, they're all cool areas. I mean, you could erase all this and build off of that too, but we still need a focal point. Yeah. So what, what I've noticed when I deal with this assignment, I've only done it one other time, but when I did it, the big idea when I had people under me, what people really struggled with was they they have the prop ideas. They put the prop idea on the paper, like what Vivian was doing, but then they forgot about the focal point, you know? Mm. Give me one area that's your dominant area that you read. May I take a screen grab of that? Absolutely. Go for it, dude. Oh, this is great. Great stuff, Phil. Thank you so much. You're welcome. My pleasure. All right. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. Okay, perfect. All right. Next over here. Cormac. What did you change on this? See the shapes. I don't know if Cormac is with us or not. He might be there. He might be tired. He might be sleeping. He might be burying cats in his backyard. His I icon is here. Huh? I know his background's there. I don't know if Cormac's here. Let's come back. He is him. most definitely not burying cats. No. He's digging holes and putting cats everywhere. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we'll come back. Cormac might have gone to the restroom for a minute. Claire. Yeah, I need help so much help. Please, Phil. <laughs> this is looking really good though. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't finish it because I, I don't know what to do. You're you're almost there. You just gotta give something <laughs> help. <laughs> I think it's funny when you guys put like help in your in your piece. Here's your answer, Claire. Your center line is going right here. Viviana, I haven't forgot about you. I'm going to come back and draw on your piece next. You're when good. When we finish these, okay? Because okay. getting, there's sometimes a pace in the class, and today it's a lot of fun to get to draw on your guys' stuff and add to it and develop it and see where it goes. So you, you have a nice center line going down part of your room right there. Um, I have two ideas based off of what you sort of did. So looks like let's match up horizon lines. It looks like your horizon line is pretty close to being about there. That's about the straightest area in your piece. You have another center, another line that's going way back this way. 
Let me put a measuring line here, make sure I'm getting stuff correct. If that's on a measuring line there, that means if we start going under that, you're going to have an angle going this way. So this pipe is going to turn a little bit more as it goes down. So it's going to be something very lightly like that. And then when I look here, you have that line. It's about there. So we're about there, there, there. I'm going up. OK. What I would do is I don't want to see it in the piece 100%. Come into here. Or trying to draw and keep skipping. These ellipses are quite off in relationship to that horizon line. They're going to be much more, let me see if I can fix it now, and have much more rounding to it. Uh, it's not quite working. Hold on a minute. Let me do something for a minute. These are little curved things that have lights in them that you can use later to your advantage for light. Okay. Because your grate that that sits under is so close to the rise line, you're barely going to see, you're just going to see lines right there. So, yeah. so those could be lights that shine up the side of it, sort of like that. So um, we need to start really identifying something out here to be more of a there's so much goodness on the left side, something here needs to become like a dominant focal read. So I'm just going to start throwing in a couple ideas and see what I come up with. I'm thinking on the other side to this in the back, there'd be something that goes like this. And there's another canister that's not nearly as tall or another vat of some kind. Let's try another vat and see what it looks like if it's behind it a little bit.
I'm worried about there being a tangency too much, but if we put a little bit behind it and one overlaps the other, and another thing we could do is come off to this. That's your center line. And that, if I do that, that'll pull it out in front of it. That's not a good idea. Hold on a minute. If I pull a pipe out, the center line goes to here and down the stairs. So it, well, it would have to cheat it coming out the side. I'm just trying to create, it might work if it was just like this. I like these pipes. I might move them over more. Hold on a minute. Let me do this real quick. Image, canvas, push the canvas that way. Let's go to pixels, inches. Let's bring your width um, up to 12, let's say. There you go, perfect. And then we'll come here, take off the lock. And C, fill that with white. I just fill it with blue. There it is. Now we can take this. That This is really nice foreground element. I love that. Come back to that in a minute. Okay. So factories have girders in them, right? Lots of girders, supports, things that are made out of metal, cross beams. I'm just trying to think like large, medium, small right now.
factory shapes. Hold on a minute. I should have fixed that. Let me do it right now. One minute. Um, I had this idea, there'd be an office window back here like that. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Have like oh. that ledge that I have there and just put it in the back there instead. Yeah. Like if you put a little arc up here, get the angle. The overseer. Yeah. Cause I like that window you put <laughs> up there. I just thought it might be better being close to the factory, to the factory <laughs> part, you know? Yeah. Then I had this other idea. If we get up here and start putting rails. Your VP back in there. Oops, I was a little off on that one. So where are they scooping stuff from those? What and let me think about that for a minute. Maybe the office actually could also be here too. That would work as well. Maybe this is not the office. Maybe this is a like a food dispenser or something. You know, and then this is your office back here. I'd make it like a ballet balcony. Now maybe it overhangs a little, you know. Oops. Well, yeah, way off. Hold on, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. My your the VPs. We need to double check your perspective on some of this too. Because this window as it goes up, it's gonna really start arcing. It's gonna have lines like, like that in there. If I way to tie that in somehow, and we just need to get
I don't like this. That needs to be resolved. Back to VPM. The VPs are off. And my my bad, I'm not looking back, plotting the points. That's a little bit better. Now I'm on it. This should pop out like this. Emphasize that area. Then come down. Yeah, like that. And that'll pop it out a little bit more. And you have this area there behind it. What if there's another food area here? Oh, Photoshop's not making lines. Hi, Phil. Hi, John. Did how, how much more? How much more class is there left? Uh, uh, hour, about hour and a half, maybe max. Okay, okay. I would like to show something, but I'm still trying to get a little more presentable before I do. Okay. Hmm. It's like spits out food or something. I don't know. Don't ask me why. I just thought that could be cool. <laughs> Do you see where your focal point is now? Claire? Yeah, sorry. I was yeah, trying right. to press a new button. I have to use Get my the phone. in the way, just kick it out of the way. Yeah. The computer. No, but look at the... Look at how the whole piece works now. That's your focal point, you know? Yeah. You I was just... having trouble just making a focal point. Just, oops. Just throw some large bats, some overlapping shapes together, you know. This is great. It all pushes you back in here. And you can get some other good overlap. There's other stuff in here you can still finish. Heck, this comes back here. I don't know why I was thinking there's something that would come back here. Maybe there's a... Get those shapes in perspective correctly, right? Yeah, this is so beautiful, Phil. You fixed my life again. Right here. Strong mileage, right? Fill your jar. Right? Sketch mm -hmm. in the sketchbook every day. Just sketch. Turn shapes into stuff, you know? You did all the work. I'm just going off of your drawing. Large blocky shapes cut, cut with other shapes cut into them. That's all it is. They just all read, they just overlap. As long as you have a couple that read as primary, nobody else really cares, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay? Let's get something cool like that big in there and you have a great little piece. Um, 
<laughs> you we do need something in here. We need something there. Where? We need something in that front area. So if mm. you keep that center line in here locked, in there, keep that going in there good like that, then what could we put there? There's all kinds of goodies. We could put a control station. We could put something with a... Uh, TVs, maybe a uh, viewing station. I get, I, I had a little idea. Let me see. We could do this too. Oh, this might be too complex. Get the ground angles in, and then there's a gap opening here. And there's machinery in the floor, which means here. It's not an OSHA approved factory, right? People fall in there and get killed all the time. That's pretty standard, actually. It makes it feel more industrial when there's openings in the floor, right? <laughs> There's a reason the factory gets abandoned later on, right? OSHA OSHA lawsuits. And then overlap something over that edge to create more depth. Man, this gets me want to get back into doing sci-fi stuff. Uh, sci-fi is right next door to factory stuff. It really is. It's a lot of cool shapes that you can do. You know? I feel like sci-fi is more fun with 3D modeling because drawing all those like round shapes and stuff just, uh Or like trying to get all the really geometric stuff like geodesic domes and hexagon like honeycomb walls. why would you like, draw oh. a geodesic dome i would never touch a geodesic dome i would exactly that's what that. i'm saying modeling i know i'd be like there's no way in hell i'm going to draw a geodesic dome that thing would take forever to divide up you know I, I remember in one of the basic drawing classes i took i dropped the class before it got there but i think you had to draw one of those i'm like wait this is basic drawing <laughs> Okay, then at the very end, there, come in and do this. Because you set it up here. Hold on a minute, let me darken this a minute. Then, because that will look cool like this. Oops. That'll be a rad foreground element you already made. Okay. Then what I would do, new layer. Back to 100% is I want something to point me back into that factory. You see that? Because here you have vertical, 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 vertical. See all those verticals in there? Yeah. So we need to point me back in there. So a way you could do that would be to introduce couple gnarly looking pipes hanging from the ceiling. Hold on, a little lower. Right about there. A 
One minute. Oh. What'd you do? Well, I'm eating my dinner right now and I hit my tooth with the fork. You know what I do all the time is I eat my food in a hurry and I like bite my lip or I bite my inside of my gum. It drives me nuts. Yes. I'm like, ow. Yes. I just slow down for a couple of minutes. You know what the best part about doing that is? It swells up. So the likelihood of you biting it again is higher. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've had that happen before. I get frustrated. And how my brush got all thick. All of a sudden, it got super thick. I'm trying to draw, and that thing's like. I think the recorder's lagging. And then let's make you more complicated. Let's send another pipe. Hold on a minute. Where was your other VP? Way back off the page, way off the page. Could get small. Put one more. I want to overlap somewhere. Pipes are awesome. Um, I think I put that in the wrong direction. Let me think for a minute. I was going to bring it backwards, but then that's not overlapping. Okay, let's overlap it then. Raise to zero. There you go. Brush. There we go. Now I've got you overlapped. Hmm. Hold on a minute. Find that VP direction. There it is. Yeah, I'll just bring it back a little bit more. Bit of a tangency there. That one was off anyway when I drew it. I do want there to be a tendency there, but that's all right. It's a minor. So then, by overlapping these pipes, it'll unite with your uh, foreground element on the right side. It's like a cross balance thing, and they cross each other. You can even put one down here if you wanted to, like that. And see, it helps push you back into your piece. Do you see that? Yeah. Because you go this way, you're all drawn in red. You go, you come into this, you look here, you get the focal point, right? You get that interesting shape. You come back here, you go up there, back up to there, and then you're back in the piece. Right into it every time. It doesn't allow you to leave without that. You come back here and you see, you come here and you leave the composition, you go that way. Okay? I see, I see. It's beautiful, Phil. All right, get a picture. Uh oh, computer's gonna crash. No. There it goes. Get okay. a picture. So you got, got it. it. All right, cool. All right, have fun. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Mr. Cormac.
Carmack with us or is he out? John Sorry. Oh, there he is. Is getting food. That's right. I figured you were either in the restroom or eating or sleeping or something. So, yeah. Um, so <laughs> you, you have a, a really nice piece here. Yeah. I didn't, I couldn't add much this weekend. I, uh, at this point, I think I'm just trying to figure out whether I should just like make a few small cleanup edits to this or try to make some clean line work for. Or just I think we need them. to address. This is a little bare. This is bare. Yeah. And this is all a little bare. Um, yeah. And there's. A couple options that I have for suggestions. Um, I to me the part that sells your piece is the visual weight of these guys hanging mm -hmm. and them pulling down and them pouring liquid. Okay. Yeah. The other part of your piece that registers to me that's important in terms of the design is this symmetrical line that divides up your space because there is symmetry in this piece and it's mm -hmm. coming in and going back across this way like that. Technically, mm -hmm. that has a line that follows and that's going to have a line that follows too. So, and then you have another route of a symmetry line. It's like an X axis if you want to think of it. And it's the line that goes from that bottom through that bottom, connects up to this wall and sort of goes up right here and wraps over. What mm -hmm. I would do if I was you is I would put something cool here, either a large window. Did you see the demo I did yesterday or Tuesday? Uh, no, I haven't had time to actually go through and watch the class. Okay, because uh, I, I address some of these things by saying you could have like, like this. Hold on, let me go back to blue. Watch it real quick because I had an idea for you. They have these these tall, like, in churches, yeah. have an ellipse like this, and then they have that, and they have a line that sort of goes in the middle like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I took a medieval or a medieval architecture yeah. class at one point, and I remembered the term for that, and now yeah. I forgot that. Because then here you could have this, then goes that way, and that line goes that way, and that one goes this way, and that will help accentuate part of your piece. And if you get a nice window in here that's really thought out and looks really good yeah. in there, that's going to line up with your green axis line there that lines up with your 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 guys being poured, right? Okay. Should and I then, scrap the pipe in front of it? Yeah, you, could, well, you might scrap the pipe. And then look, what if this came out and was rounded? And what if there's a control station there? Like, and there's chairs Ooh. and there's seats there you know what i mean and they're overlooking mm -hmm. that and there's this huge window behind them then the next axis lines are these lines that are going in that direction so then when these come out here it's in your best interest to almost work off those and consider splitting stuff like pipes that one lands there the other one might land like right there see and that's going to reinforce directional stuff that goes back to the center of your uh, your vats there. So then you can do all kinds of things. You could, you could like come in here. This could be slightly elevated and it can drop. Then it could go down. You could have um, a huge tube that comes off of this that goes back in that direction. You could have another like large element overlapping here and that might come here into another piece in there. And then you could, you could actually, I think I was telling you in that demo, your door might be large. If you shrink the size of your door, you increase the height of all the, the stuff in your room. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because if somebody here, if somebody here is that tall, you just made your vats a whole lot smaller. If someone here is only that tall, you made your vats a whole lot larger. So mm -hmm. somebody here to me would be like that tall, being smaller. And then it makes your factory look even larger. Heck, you could even make them this tall here. And this could be an area with multiple, oops, like a couple chairs and monitors hanging off this edge. 
can be this huge support underneath. And then I, I like the idea you had of the round thing. I just might move it to one side. Like what if you have a pipe system that's here and that round thing comes up and then maybe it curves into the wall and then there's a separator and then you have another window back here. See, this now becomes part of your focal point working with this, if that makes sense. All right. And then this, I, I love the shape. That's a gorgeous shape. Get that in there. Have that in there. Maybe there's, we get, think of cool things like this. Like maybe there's a metal piece here and there's a curve that supports it made out of steel. And then we see that other curve there like that, supporting that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe there is coming off of this, we see a huge metal thing with rivets. And then we see a small pipe come out of there and drop down. And then maybe when that pipe hits about, um, God, I just had a flashback. And big idea, I would do that and I'd have a counter rolling. There was a counter they wanted in the script. I don't know why it just popped in my head. But you could have literally, there could be a, a large box here. And then from that box then splits off two other pipes coming down you know what i mean so these are just foreground details that you get to keep you know and then maybe it's made out of like different chunks of metal it's supported see how that pushes you back into the center then yeah a little bit more so i think if you develop this window on that x axis line that goes up here that's going to support it you push some more elements back in this way. And heck, you can still you can get away with some nice overlap. You could come here. There could be another chair. There could be a guy sitting here. Because I saw that control station there. You could have a little control station right here. Now that makes that place look massive. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could have that there. Heck, you can, that door could be, we could move the door. Maybe, maybe under this. The door is back here in the back. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then this is all pump equipment and other stuff, pumping everything. And then those are your primaries up there. You know? Yeah. I even like the idea, since you have those curves in there, I was wondering, like, what if when you have that curve wraps around it, what if there's like a a big like on the you see on the Golden Gate Bridge and a big cable that holds that there. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And then maybe there's another one here like this. So it really intensifies that weight. And then when that cable goes, maybe this one ends here. And there's like a big, you know, those big bolts cable holding it. And this one goes way off the screen that would connect to that guy there. You know? See these lines help push us back in your composition too. Right? Yeah. You know, and then this curves you back down, come back to here. Um, I think another thing I was mentioning is I think on your the notes I gave you the other day, I think we were I was saying too, you could get a cool angled. Let me see, I forgot where the VP was. I think the VP is about there. You could get another angled like little work area here mm -hmm. with a chair there, foreground element there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm overlapping that and then here this is a great shape i love this might bring something yeah i needed here. something to put on top of it but i couldn't think of yeah, anything at the maybe top. something just angles hold on i don't want to cut off that shape maybe it angles like this it's this way then it goes up and overlaps and then we come up and we just have a rounded another rounded simple thing with another pipe comes off behind it going sideways like that you know what i mean yeah look look at the change of the drawing now we're just re-emphasizing everything back into the middle mm -hmm. sound good go watch go yep. watch yesterday's demo because i did a demo on it and okay now i had another idea throwing it back in there because i feel like i got a little warmed up getting to draw on people's stuff tonight so now you can go back in and throw that back in there as well. Okay? Can do. Cool. All right. Good job, Cormac. It's a good piece. It's going to be fun. 
Thank solid. you. And then the benefit of the window too is now now when we do the before and after. Yeah, big hole in the wall. Oh, big that window crack, big vine coming in. And then yeah. th this is great too, because then you can have like vines hanging here, stuff growing. You like vines hanging. You know, you could have like parts of trees are coming down into this thing and growing all over. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's gonna be a lot of fun to get to put in there, you know, with all that stuff. And now that we did that, I might just come back in here, go to your VP and just slingshot another one right in here like that in the back there. But it might need to be this, check your VP. I might've been off. That might need to be about there. And then the other one might need to be back here and back at the very, very back further to make the, the distance be mm -hmm. correct for proportional division. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do Actually, the... I'll do it in a way that makes sense. You don't even really, the two work fine. You know what I mean? Because this yeah. is a really nice shape that fills up a lot of space back there. So yeah, I didn't really want to break it. Yeah, exactly. If you don't break it, leave it alone. It actually works fine. So it's me nitpicking too much. So just leave it the way that it is, and then you'll be good to go. Okay. Right. Thank you. All right. Good job. Nicely done. All right. Um, it's nine o'clock. And let's keep going. We have Ashley's. Let me bring up it cells real quick. Johnny, say you uploaded something, right? I did. Let me go get it. I also up some, uploaded something a little late, Bill. I did some. Okay, I'll go grab it. Let me refresh. And one minute, where are we? I have, well, why is it not refreshing? Let me try again. There it goes. But he clicked it, nothing happened. So I've got Raphael's, got Latoya, there's John's. Let me download John's. And then let me grab um, Carlos. I'm not seeing your work in there. Uh, mine? Um, yeah. Could have sworn. I don't see it in there. No, I, I'm pretty sure I uploaded it. I, I, I'm reading it right now. It's Itzel, Ashley, Claire, Cormac, Factory, Carlos, and then John, Latoya, Raphael. You're not in there, Vivian, and Will. So whatever, if you uploaded it, I don't think it made it. Uh, let me check. It might have got snagged Until by the... Uh, week 11, uh, Thursday. Nope, mine's box. right there. Huh? I, I can see it right there. Uh, week... 11 with, oh, wait, oh. You're the wrong, the wrong Yep. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Yeah, the Google Docs uh, okay, I got its cells. Okay, give one. me a moment. Go ahead, take your time. John's is there. Okay, uh, just a moment. Can I just... Come on. Okay, let me go get it. No, why am I? My BB. Water. Only person who is this, but I don't know. I kind of miss the old mechanical keyboards and mice. It made really loud noises, and I like that. <laughs> you know what, John? I'm the same way. I like big old fat IBM keyboards where I can hear me. Yeah. Punch. I hate the new ones. I love that so noise. Thin. 
I barely touch one key and I hit like three other letters. It drives me insane. When I was trying to get a keyboard for my iPad, remember the one they made, like Apple made, and it was like typing on a pillow and it drove me bananas. I could not stand it. <laughs> That's a good, it is like typing on a pillow. It's true. All right, Maurice, we got John, and I think that's golden. There. You, you also need mine too, Phil. Huh? You also need mine too. Yeah, yours is there too. No, the gods say no without sacrifice. No, please. <laughs> sacrifice. Can't sacrifice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I got to stop on the cat thing. I'm going to really piss somebody off. Um, that looks a whole lot better, Ashley. Right? I was like thinking in my head if I should widen the shot more if that's overdoing it. I wouldn't widen it at all. The only little thing I might do is, well, you got the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt's a little out of scale, but it's rough, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think that looks nice. Um, the only thing I was tempted to do was like I like I want to put something here in the middle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like to unify it because there's a symmetry in there. I see the conveyor belt, but the conveyor belt could also be going behind it too. Mm -hmm. I just felt like like what if there was I don't know what if we came here and if we follow this line up here. Well, I don't know a couple ideas. I was thinking one idea was like what if there's some device or something here and it it's larger i don't know let me figure it out real quick and there's like pumps going off of it oh that'd be cool or something and it's you know the problem is it gets you, you you get these angles in there and it's hard to get other stuff in there you know yeah that that was one idea the something's hanging down there's pumps into it Nah. Or maybe it could be like that mechanism could be like something that it, it flowers the bread before it goes in or something. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like something in the middle there to make up that space. And it's also acts like as a bullseye between your center lines. Another way to do that too is to divide up your floor space. Like you have this, have edging around it. Then you have this end, have edging around it. And then this tile goes like this way. And then this tile is the tile that goes both ways. So it gets more emphasized there. Yeah. Another, another idea I had was, what if okay, what if we bring this down a little bit lower, similar to like what we're doing with flares? What if that was like an office window? In there, it was something. You're still drawing broth gothic even though you're doing bread gothic bread <laughs> maybe then there's a pipe i don't know it's just trying to think of something to put there i can't quite hit it yet but you know what i mean mm -hmm. they're like something belongs there sort of to level that out it's a good sketch everything else works or Ooh, what if it's, hold on. Where's your BP right there? I want to break the symmetry though. You have these shapes in front of it mm -hmm. shape behind it that's the problem you have those other angled shapes those angled shapes sort of get in the way a little bit like i want to put something there you know but i i understand yeah. why you have them there
little bit of a tendency, but. Maybe the conveyor belt does fall behind this, you know? Mm hmm Yeah, because I know that, like, in the video that I was watching, they had, like, their cooling system was basically, like, to give the bread kind of, like, a ride around the 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 warehouse. So I was just like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Maybe this actually... Got to be careful. Is that might be off too? This the way if that's your point. This end here, if that's a support, this wall is going to come in back like this, and that's fine. Maybe it goes back like this. Then you have your you have your stairs here, and there's something raised in the back there. If that's in the back there, then you can get away with having like another large shape or something behind there. You know. And then maybe yeah. on the upper floor, maybe there's girders. And this whole upper floor, maybe the bread, there's like a a gate like this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the bread maybe comes in from the angle of the wall. Like this. And then like this huge pulling system thing up on top of all this, you know what I mean? Yeah. You see how that becomes a little bit more of a focal point, though? And I had another idea, too. What if... Yeah, I like the conveyor belt, right? What if the conveyor belt's a teeny bit thinner? What if right here... There's a little area for workers to control everything. Like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you still just move this back a little bit more. You know? What do you think? I think it reads a lot better that way. <laughs> just if there's something here to match up. Again, I'm back doing that thing where you have a center line. It's all, you know, in here. And I want to bring that and make that the most important area like that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, gosh, you know what you could even do, too, mm -hmm. is if that line, once it goes across here, you could, I know you're showing that end, but you could still get away with, too, having like a... What in the world? Oh, that was a weird noise. I don't know why. It's just the factory part. I just feel like having a some weird, stupid thing that's like it's spray. I don't know why. I could spray in something on the bread as it goes by. You know what I mean? Sesame seeds. Yeah, it's sprinkle dropping little seeds. 
on the bread. And that needs to be lower too. You know, you could even you could have another arch in there. Brings you back into the maybe not too much. It hits a tangency. Be an mm -hmm. angle like this comes in. That could be hold on a minute. I think I did, oh man, I didn't do it on another layer. I got into it. Um, this could be lower about here, but it might hit tangency. It actually might be fine there because it doesn't overlap the other stuff in the back. You know? Yeah. I think you could put a little station there, have workers there, because that's your scale. You could have all the, just make sure your angles are correct on the bread, you know? Oh, yeah. I was fixing the perspective because I just like went to town yeah. on it without doing really like solid perspective lines in my rough. So I was just like, let me just try to fix I like your voice. Now. You're like perspective, right? Oh, <laughs> you know, oh, perspective, right? You know, get yes. that perspective in there. I think if you get a focal point in there like that and you develop that a little bit and then get the seats in there, I think that'll really, because it really does, you can see that center line, that pathway. And mm -hmm. the one thing I, I learned from doing like background design and, and character pathways is that there is a line that brings you to the center focal point. And that line is not just, it's an X and a Y axis. And technically it's a Z to it. It goes up, it goes across and goes into the, the like the spatial plane basically. But for us, what we're really seeing is that line there. And then if you look over the other line that we're really seeing in the piece that makes sense to the viewer is because you see it happening here. We're just seeing it, I see it more in the middle like that. Yeah. We love to splice up and we're, we're symmetrical creatures. We like looking at things in symmetry. Our houses are designed in symmetry. So it makes sense to me if you do that, all that connects back up to everything you have, you know? So maybe, you know, th this this is just becomes a machine that this bread goes into, but then come back to that back wall here, find that point like the triangle measure. So if that's, that angle there, that means your other bread angle needs to be like that there. Mm. That makes sense. Or if I did that right, it might be coming down a little bit more like this. That okay. makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good job. Thank you, Phil. My pleasure. All right. Next. Ooh. John, your line weight is always so nice and this feels so thick. You said it's nice, but it feels thick, huh? No, no, your line weight is always really thin, usually, and this feels a lot thicker in here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's a reason for that, and I'm thinking of going back. I changed yeah. the sensitivity on my tablet because of my wrist, oh, and I'm finding it nice. incredibly hard to get thick to thin. made it really soft, so I think I have to change I'm, it back I'm worried again. you might agitate your wrist a little bit, you know? Yeah, just kind of being careful. I know you're dying uh, usually... to get back into it, but the, the thick line actually flattens a little bit of the piece, and it would be better to let your wrist heal completely, you know? so No, it, my yeah. wrist is healed completely, actually. Yeah. It's just that I didn't change my sensitivity back because I don't, I don't know. But that's why the lines are thicker than they I, usually are. I'd be careful putting all this wood detail in there it starts to become, you have detail everywhere and there's no area of rest. Yeah. There's detail on the wall, there's detail I, here, there's detail on the brick, there's detail on the wood, detail there, there's detail there, detail there, detail there. It's everywhere. There's no area of rest. Uh -huh. You need to have an area, yeah, I got an area of rest. You need to give it, it, it just looks, it's a, the other sketch I saw was a really great design. I think you're getting too overly detailed into this i would just say take it easy slow it down come back look at it with a fresh set of eyes you know uh, my question with detail though and this yeah. is something i've never fully got and maybe you can help me with this is like okay i won't show the viewer that that is a wooden floor and a transition stone how do you do that without doing it the way i'm doing it? <laughs> well lost and found edges you you might put some, there's lot, lots of things you do. You could break this up. That could be a large wooden beam, you know? You could have another mm -hmm. beam go this way. 
and then you'd have smaller planks in the middle. So this is an area of rest. That's an area. Hmm. That's one way to do it. You know, um, or like the walls, like the walls are made out of stone. So how do you like show the stones with every single one? You suggestive detail. You indicate it's like when you do on a, a tile ground, you know, you can have a walkway to someone's house like this. And you, you also got to do is put some tile here and you space it a couple tile there, a couple smaller in the back. And it's suggestive. That's it. You don't need to do it. Oh, no, you're like making big and then filling them in. Yeah, but area of detail, area of rest, you know? Yeah. Because so, you, all your detail here and here and here is pulling out of your, going to pull out of your focal point. It's going to be overly detailed. So you need to really cut back on stuff. And if there's that much detail in it, you might have to come back and kick back, get rid of stuff and go back to just the big visual read. My concern in here is you designed from the outside inward instead of designing from the focal point outward. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Your focal point yeah, yeah. is going to be between here, there, and there. Because that's going, that pulls us. Yeah, I don't know. That's something that I need to consciously practice with because I know I've like, I've always drawn like foreground and then I work my way back and set a focal point and then work on that. So it, what's funny is like that I, sometimes I put all works. the energy in the full. <laughs> yeah, but what you said, that sometimes works for organic environments or it works for um, scenes that are outdoors. That can work very much because you mm -hmm. have to construct that stuff. When we're constructing in a box, things can change a little bit. They get a little bit harder and a little bit different to identify, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the only difference, you know? So okay. if I was you- Dial it back. I yeah, cut it, dial it back, because right now, I, I go back and look at your other work you've done, and you had areas, I think you're getting caught up into, I mean, dude, you got the pipes, you got the rivets, you got the curves, you got the rails, everything is just, it just needs to loosen up a little bit. and. And then mm -hmm. what I would do is I wouldn't even do any of this. I would just finalize what is this and this and how do they work in unison together for your focal point, you know? Yeah, I, I'm in the process of drawing that out. Yeah. Because okay. I look at this and then I start getting other ideas too, you know? Because this yeah. turn, that, that came out very nice. That looks great. Looks like this large mechanical tool being turned. And I like that. Um, but then I start thinking, it gives me other ideas too. It makes me think about, ooh, what if we had a curve in here like this? You know, right? And then what if down here, mm -hmm. there's one large vat like that, you know? Yeah. This is picking stuff up from, from here. Maybe this isn't a walkway. Maybe this is a dump spout. And it's knocking vegetables and stuff into these containers, these wooden things. And then there's workers getting those ready. And there's a, a guy up here working at a at a control station in a chair overseeing everything. And he's moving, he's controlling that arm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, just another idea, because you haven't quite finished everything in the back there. So, but John, I would really... Yeah. Take a little bit of a break. Just be careful of your wrist. You had it agitated. You got a little bit over, and then all of a sudden you start coming back, and then you don't want to agitate it again. Mm -hmm. And if you're adjusting the sensitivity on your, on your sen on your tablet to be less because your wrist hurts, I would still take a break because if it hurts, you're going to agitate it and make it worse. Yeah, my wrist isn't hurting now. It's just I'm, I I lowered the sensitivity when I was easing myself back in. But now I'm like good, so I'm wondering if I should change sensitivity back so I can get better lines or not. Sure, uh, like I can tell you something happened to me since we're on the subject. Right here, mm -hmm. there's a tendon that connects to my humerus bone right there, right. And I was yeah. like, I don't know if I was doing push curls or curls up to the bicep. I did something right here, and I get a pain that's like a knife stabbing me in the side, 
And I told my wife about it and she goes, you need to stop lifting. I'm like, oh, I get mad. I don't want to stop lifting. So what I did is I just went down to lighter weights, more repetitions that don't bother me at all. And when it's when I go to a little bit heavier weight, I get that tendon. I don't know if I if I was dirt bike riding, I did something, something in there agitates the hell out of that tendon. And and I feel it if I keep going to the gym and agitating it, it gets worse and worse. Even at school, I picked up my bag and it felt like someone was stabbing me in the side with a knife. So yeah, I, I'm now backing off of it completely. When I go to the gym, I just do very lightweight. I'm not doing anything heavy because I need that to heal. That's a huge part of me going riding, camping, and it's my my rest arm. The other day, it's my left hand on the keyboard, and I could feel it agitating me. So I adjusted it too. So just be careful. Just being Father Phil here, trying to get you to not make anything worse, okay? Uh, I know. I'm totally taking it to heart. Okay, cool. Thanks, John. Hey, Phil. Thanks. I have a quick question about uh, what you mentioned to John uh, yeah. with making uh, indications of detail are there is there any type of exercises you would recommend us that we could do to improve that so because because like i i have the same problem sometimes when i want to indicate detail i, I go into render mode like I, I, just just get into it get into the rhythm is yeah. there a, some type of exercise you recommend or well remember when we do those call outs those prop groupings prop prop groupings are great because you just do these little sketches and then you apply the prop groupings into your environment when you're putting it together. So, you know, you do a grouping and when you do the groupings, you keep that stuff in mind, you large, medium, small area of detail, area of rest, right? Make sure your center lines are working, make sure everything's connected, uh, overlap. So right there, those are terms you guys should write down and keep in the back of your brain. You know, yeah. you have to think about it. You have perspective. What we're talking today about center lines in a grid. So you have a center line that runs down the middle of the room. You have center lines that run left to right of the room. Those are pivotal lines. And it's funny because I've had people argue with that to me and I take their stuff and I break it down and I go, see? And I'm like, you have an axis line in perspective that runs this way and one that runs this way. We're symmetrical creatures. All of our film, the history of film, everything is broken down into symmetries like that. So if you break it down, that's step number one. Step number two, you know, uh, biggest silhouette is going to be your focal point and then your focal point is created it's by silhouette it's by contrast and by detail uh and then the other thing we just said having an area of detail having an area of rest you got to balance those two and then the other thing was overlap of shape when i started going into like ashley's piece in claire's i'm just overlapping in latoya's i'm just putting a couple shapes in front of other shapes going large, medium, and small, and it works very quickly, right? So you get you get in that mentality of doing that sometimes. And you know what? The same thing also applies itself to character design. I was sketching some characters the other day, and I was thinking, man, I was getting too focused on detail. I need to go large, medium, small. You know, hair shape that's big, smaller shape, eyes tiny. And you, you just start really focusing on the large, mediums, and small thing. And then it really starts to help you. Okay? Does that help you a little bit? If I could also add something. Sure, absolutely. Um, the thing that I found between this project and like the other projects that I've been doing for both the classes that I've been with Phil is uh, stuff that looks like really complicated with like machinery with like a lot of like surface detail. Uh, all it really is is just like a single basic shape, but with like a couple smaller shapes on top of it. You're 100% and like, right. That's all you really need to like make it look like it has like a lot of like information. Yeah, and and you're you're right. And Raphael, that comment you you just put up there is 100% right too. By the way, because I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, um, yeah, you're totally right. It, it's it, when you strip away everything, it's back to like just big shapes, big blocky shapes. That's why I come come back to. Like what I teach in basic drawing for entertainment arts, it's just large blocky shapes in front of other shapes and how they intersect with other shapes. And if you start doing that intersecting shapes all the time, that's like the secret to everything. That literally is. It's it's the shape to reads. It's the shape to construction. All the detail is is just little rivets, little lines placed on top of that shape. But if your perspective's off and your angles aren't there and the detail that you're putting on top of your cake, 
So those shapes are like cake shapes to me because my daughter always watched Cake Boss, right? So I'm always thinking of like, you know, smear on the frosting and then they go, got a little tool and they squeeze little details. All that little detail is the same thing we're putting on and you have to have that. And just to add on to what Raphael was putting in the chat room there, he made a comment that it's fear that breeds that mindset and the fear of trying and the fear of failing. And there is something about that too, because I it happened to me the other day. I've been killing it on like a bunch of other studies I was doing. And I sat down the other the other day at Starbucks and I saw a couple of grandmas hanging out and having coffee. And then it hit me. I'm like, dude, I'm going to do a whole bunch of stuff on grandmas. That'll be a fun topic. I've never really drawn grandmas before. And I started drawing grandmas and every single grandma I drew was just like paper ball, paper ball, paper ball. I was getting so angry. And then it hit me like, like Phil, I got mad at myself. I'm like talking to myself. I'm like, you're doing a new subject matter you haven't done before. I've been doing hippos, alligators, all these other creatures. My brain is focused on that. And I know the, that shape language. And then my shape language has also been on environment sketching in this class. So I had to stop and go back and look at grandmas and pay attention to what's happening in the shapes. And then it hit me like grandmas, their cheekbones are exposed. They have more wrinkles. Their faces are scrunched together. They're like little apples. And, I, and then I went back and started applying that. And I was so like frustrated in, in, in the, I could feel the fear in my drawing of failing. Does that make sense? I could feel it when I was doing it. And then I stop and I go, dude, I know I can do this. I know I can conquer it, change my mindset. And let's go back. And I, I hit reset, took a break and said, I'm going to go sketch shapes and have fun. Then I'm going to look at reference. Then I'm going to go look at real photo reference of real grandmas get the visual identifiers from that, come back and I'm going to apply it. And actually tomorrow is going to be my, my application day in the middle of the day. I'm going to sit back and just sketch because I have this cool idea of doing like grandmas and their pets. Because I started thinking there was this grandma that had a bird on her shoulder. And then I saw another grandma just that same day with a cat. So I have this idea of doing like old people and their pets. And then that'll lead to something else. So I was thinking of that, you know, that lady who's at home, who's like the hoarder, who has like cats everywhere. And my Are brain you talking started... about me? No, not you. You're not there yet. You need another 30 years, Claire. Then well, maybe we'll get there. No, I'm just kidding. No. no, but I was thinking of those people, right? And then actually my wife popped in my head because my wife loves like little cockatoos. She could be that crazy lady cockatoo. She'd be like this little blonde lady with like a house filled with cockatoos and she'd be happy and I'd want to light the place on fire, okay? So um, that's what started going through my mind was like people and their pets and there's really a uniqueness with people and their pets. And I've even noticed in my neighborhood, people walking their pets, how they look a lot like their pets type of thing. So anyway, my point is, as I'm going back to that, it's really easy to to, my point is, is that it's easy to do something. It's easy to get frustrated. And then that that fear of failure comes into your drawing and you sense it and you feel it. And it's really easy to get it kicked out, to get rid of that. You just got to go back to basics. You got to simplify and get out of that old mentality, which is how we were when we were kids. When we were all kids, we we're like, yeah, I'm going to render it. And I'm going to make it look better. And I'm going to put every little ounce of detail and that doesn't get you anywhere and then you start to realize that and to me that was the difference of getting to work with other like good artists and good designers you know michael spooner phil phil mendez being around john navarre is watching these people sketch seeing steven silver talk about these things i mean all of that comes full circle it doesn't matter there's a direct correlation between character design environment design and all that that's the fundamentals of good old-fashioned design coming out so you guys go in and start applying that. You'll get better and better. So Carlos, I would say just start doing some some vignette sketches of what would be focal points. Get something that's very interesting and then break off a drawing from it. Go out and have fun doing that. Go to the Arboretum yeah. and you know draw something that looks really cool and then and then stylize the other stuff around it that's there. But remember, your job isn't to just. It always bugs me when people have this sort of illustration mentality like you need to copy everything you see like you're a robot no you don't that's not what films based off of animation or the history of cinema part of what that storytelling is based off of is taking reference and material and then implementing it and making it look better 
for the reader. Remember, your viewer and an audience, whether they're at home or in the theater, they get like a second to a, excuse me, half a second to like a second and a half to see an establishing shot. So boom, it has to read like that. And when they look, they're going to be looking at one, two, three visual reads and a story. So you could take any cinematic movie. I've had this conversation with Brian Murray and Marshall. They, they know it because they've been around it. You start looking at like American Illustrator's works, the great master's works. You start looking at people in cinema, look at Casablanca, look at Alfred Hitchcock, start paying attention to um, uh, Guillermo, uh, Guillermo uh, del Toro, all these good designers. And then you'd be like, man, look at what they're doing, large, medium, small, and then simple reads left to right. James Cameron is brilliant at that too. James Cameron went to Fullerton College, by the way, if you didn't know that. Cool. So you start putting all this stuff together and it's just good old fashioned design coming out on paper, you know? Okay. Next time you do a study, go do some sketches of like factories, anything. I was doing one today for the Gnome project in prop design. And all I was thinking was large desk, medium, small. That's it. But Im import that into your design and do it and catch yourself when you don't do it. Mm. You've got to have that secondary voice. You know that voice where you're like, hey, maybe jumping in your car after a couple of beers isn't good, right? It's that voice <laughs> that comes out that goes, hey, maybe maybe if I drop a fart in Starbucks in front of like 10 people, it's not going to come out good, right? It's that common sense voice. You need to get that common sense voice to apply into your work. And you have to be able to look at it and go, what am I doing that's wrong? Most of you guys in here all did your projects totally fine. I just had to kick you in the butt and steer you in the right direction. And once I show you how to do it, then it makes sense. So the more you practice and reiterate that, the better you will get at your drawings and the more that you will learn about design. And I'm like anyone else. I do drawings and I look at it and go, oh, I could have done that better. Or, or I, I was rushed to get out of here and then I, I went through a, a drawing quicker because I had to go pick up one of my kids or something. So that's a common thing too, you know? So it, you got to take all that with a grain of salt and just sit down, stress relief. Don't worry about what you're doing and just let the best thing come out, you know? Okay. That's right. Good topic though. I love talking about this stuff because you guys see it happening in your own work, you know? Um, Maurice, you have good information of a room. Uh, you have good props of the room. You need to do what I was doing today, which is you need to go sketch an area that's your focal point. So that's going to be like a large bat, maybe something like, you know, like a large pit in the ground. And then you might have this large container here. It's being held up and something's going to pour in there. So you, when I look at this, the middle of your composition is empty. Nothing wrong with that because with the rule of thirds, we're looking at the third angles of our composition, right? But there, you you have cool props in the room. You need to go in there now and start. You Today's demos I did on other people's work is going to help you because now you're going to think about how to construct the room around it. Now, I am going to point out side view, side view. You're only oh. showing two walls. You need to have one, two, three, or four like that, side view. Or you need to come in, and we were talking about this a couple of days ago, you can do a low angle shot like this. It hits that. Then the wall goes like that. That's what a lot of people are doing. Here, you get one, two, three, four walls in that view. Here, you have one, two, three, four, five walls in that view. Do either one of these, these views. Don't do these views, because these views only give you two walls. And I talked about that a couple of weeks ago in class about setting up angles. You need to stay, this is good or that is good, okay? Do one of those shots, but now sketch an idea for your focal point. Your focal point is going to be in the symmetrical area of the room. It might have a large, medium, and small shapes, and then design the other stuff around it. And then take all this goodness you did of these shapes and that shape and that and that and put that stuff around it, okay? I see, Phil, I understand that, thanks. You're welcome, thank you. All right, it's so. It's so, I know you've been busy. It's good to see your work. Um, you're very talented at what you do. I know you've been swamped with other things. Um, I'm glad I got to see this. I do wanna see more though from you because there's other projects 
you can email me that stuff so we can see it. And I, here's the thing is I know you're busy, but you are extremely talented at what you do. And when you apply yourself, it is amazing at what you do. But on that other accord, if you're super duper behind, um, keep that in mind because I don't want that to affect you in terms of a grade in the class. I get it. I have students behind all the time. I think this is a beautiful piece that you're doing here. It looks fantastic. The line quality looks exceptional. You have foreground, midground, and background. Everything looks really great. My suggestion would be to finish it, finish the line in there. Okay. It's a phenomenal piece. Yeah, I'm still working on it. Um, I've been working on it uh, during the class too. Okay, but mm -hmm. some of your other stuff I need to see too, just to keep yeah. you caught up. So I uh -huh. can critique it or give you feedback, okay? Mm -hmm. This is gonna be a wonderful portfolio piece. And you finish this and get it all done, it's it's exceptional, it's a beautiful drawing. That That's the type of stuff you're already beating the competition when it comes to the job market, you know? So when you go to apply for a job, working at a company or a studio, and they're looking for a background designer, that what you're doing right here is a golden portfolio piece, okay? It's very well done, all right? I love it. I downloaded it earlier, took a look at it, and I was like, man, that's absolutely gorgeous. It's a beautiful piece. Thank you, Phil. Okay, my pleasure, all right? All right, I love it. Finish it up, it looks fantastic. Thank you, Itzel. All right, Viviana, going back in time to the one and only master of Burbank. Where do you live in Burbank, by the way? Just curious. I used to live off of uh, Victory, right? Like three blocks before I got to North Hollywood. Oh, I'm in Van Nuys. Oh, you're um, Van Nuys. talking oh, to somebody so else. Right. By Sherman Oaks and Van Nuys. Oh, I gotcha. But I'm on Sepulveda and Victory, so. Oh, so you're on, I know where you are you're on the north side because I was on Victory, but closer to Burbank side there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I know where you are. Um. So you're sort of the same thing I was talking about earlier. We just need something dedicated in the middle that's your focal point. And with this perspective, like what Maurice was doing too, you have a line of symmetry that's pretty much going down about right there. So not that you have to have something there. I could come in here. Let me throw on a couple layers and just show you real quick. I could make the focal point over here, right here. All I got to do is get the most area of detail. So let me just sketch for a minute. I just start getting some cool shapes in here. But you do have those perspective issues because look, if that's your vanishing point, your lines here would be going like that. And this, that's probably the, your biggest threat is that's going there and there's a point there and that's going there. You have stuff and then this goes to there. So you have stuff all over. You got to really nail down that part of that, that perspective in there. But let's continue with this. I don't know what I just hit. I hit my keyboard. So weird. So now I'm starting to think large. Your rise line's there. Yeah, you need to really nail down that perspective because if you 
have that off and the whole piece, that's going to throw all your lines off. And then you spend all that time working on your piece. And without those other lines coming together, you're not going to know if you're coming or going in the piece because you don't know if, if it's working or not because you'll be fighting the vanishing points more than you'll be fighting anything else. You know? Even if we kept this here. Hmm. I emphasize something in front of it. Like what is it pouring? What is it going into? Kind of, you know, is it is it going in a is it does it go in a hole that drops down and then it gets processed, it gets refined? Is it go into a a pump system, there's like tubes in here, and that pumps it out through the factory, you know? Is there these big beefy supports around it? Is this on a rail system so it can move back and forth? How do they get stuff in there? So you gotta I maybe consider some of those ideas. Maybe there's a thing here. And it has a come on Photoshop lagging. In the back there's a some type of a mechanism. Maybe it's dropping recycled metals. Maybe this line here is a conveyor belt going in there. Maybe there's a door there. I'm just throwing this out. We could do 10 other ideas, right? But now you start to get a little bit more. Now what I want to do is I like this a lot, where now I want to make that larger. Oops, wrong way. Find out a little bit more. Maybe this also needs to be defined more too then. Hey, I'm drawing lines and nothing's coming out, which means Photoshop's not liking the Zoom eating all the memory.
See, that's like a pumping that pumps underground or something, right? See the difference now? Do you see where your focal is? Yes, sir. Hold on a minute. Let me give you a trace line real quick. Trace line there. Trace line. Oh, gosh darn it. I know I did something wrong. I did it on the wrong layer. Give me one minute. I'd ask you something, Phil. Yes, sir. We we're talking about like over rendering, hyper detail, all that. Is there like, is there a place for that illustration mindset? I would be like, well, duh, illustration. But I mean, like in this field, are there areas where if you got a job where they would ask you to like do a really fancy like splash image or keyframe or something where you really go into detail because some of the concept art that I see come from the industry there's a heck of a lot of detail in some of it well yeah I mean that's the, number one we're talking about so many different fields I mean anyone who says oh illustration is the best or this is the best or that they're idiots they all overlap they're all overlapping fields I mean you can take mm -hmm. an editorial, editorial illustrator that does stuff for editorial magazines or a medical illustrator and they do incredibly detailed stuff and then but everyone has a different pathway sort of an art you know so you know um if that makes sense you know um so the, i don't the, remember his name it always bugs me when I, people do that they're like like you know you can only make a job doing this i'm like no you can't you can do a job doing all kinds of things now to answer that question if you get really good at drawing and storytelling and you understand some of those, by the way, too many squared shapes here. I need to round this stuff here a little bit more because I want to get rid of the rounded. You have some weird feels in there. Just a mention to that, Viviana. I want to try to get rid of some of the angles and get some rounded elements in there, you know? Um, anyway, um, so to me, that's what, okay, uh, you guys know what a visual development artist is, right? Right. Visual development artists are really good at illustrating. They know how to draw characters. They know how to work in different styles. They know how to, to do environments. And actually, really good, a lot of really good visual development artists that I know, here's the funny tie between them. They are illustrators, but they worked in animation first for 10 plus years and really mastered the art of like environments. And then everyone, I most of the people I know that work in development that are really good, they worked at Disney or Warner Brothers. I can name, I can name 10 people right now. You know, John Navarro, Simon Rogers, Michael Spooner, uh, Jim Slanker, Paul Felix. I go through the whole list. There's like all these other artists lined up. Their, their similarity between them is they all worked in TV animation first and they had to draw extensively, cranking out 
two, three, four images a day. And when they did that, they built that they built up speed. So can someone who does children's book illustration and does renderings of kids and stories be a great dev development artist? Heck yeah. A lot of people I know that are good development artists do that, but they paid their dues first. They came in the industry, they worked as um they worked in background design or prop design and they did it for so many years that you picked up you pick up all those skill sets and you learn how to crank through all that stuff if that makes sense it does because okay. when you were talking about like detail and rest and stuff i was thinking about uh you've showed him before i don't remember his name but like he did like a painting of this army and there was like a hundred people painted in there and elephants and banners. And like, I'm thinking that probably took that guy like a hundred hours to do. <laughs> that was just, that was Justin sweet. I went to school with Justin. Mm -hmm. That's a like, great example. Justin sweet is a traditional oil painter. He also does works in Photoshop. He knows what he's doing. He's very, uh, he's very talented, very skilled. He's an amazing designer. He worked in games first. Before be, now he's a senior level concept artist for all of Disney live action film. Before he got there, mm -hmm. Justin Sweet and Vance Kovacs, they went to school with me and Marshall. Marshall was our teacher. And Marshall taught us everything he knew in design and composition. I was bummed when I taught composition last semester and I barely had any students in the class. I'm like, dude, composition is the most important thing to have, period. Like you need to know that's what you talk about arrangement of shapes, overlap and grouping, all that's composition. But students don't like having to put in the work sometimes. They want to go right to, and I get it. They want to go right to the sweet spot. They want to be able to go out. They want to be able to get a job and do that stuff, you know? And that makes sense. I get yeah, it. I know. It's, it's. I know you want to get a I job, but again, I come back to like basics. <laughs> like you can't get a job and be working for somebody professionally unless if you can't knock out two or three rough sketches in a day, then there's a problem. You need to get to that level. That's what that job. And uh, excuse me, let me rephrase that. You will get to that level. As long as you can knock out one or one and a half a day, you'll be fine. You know, but you know, again, back sort of like back to the basics thing, you know, you need to just figure out, how to get that in everyone wants to like okay how people all these students want to be biz dev artists well how are you going to be a biz dev artist if you don't know how to draw environments and you don't know color and you don't know color theory you know and and then you know sometimes i get students I like, yeah i'm going to go out and make a million dollars in children's book illustration i'm like go for it, it it's a very competitive field it's i think the hardest so get your chops Get your experience in another area first, you know? Yeah, I, I think the hardest Then thing... go be that children's book illustrator. Come up with a really cool idea. Come up with something really fantastic. Then you'll become the next Chris Van Allsburg. Then you'll become the next, you know, uh, what's his name? Joyce, uh, William Joyce, that did all the stuff that um, was bought from uh, 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 Blue Sky. You know, you'll you can become that guy, but you. I go back to this. You, here's the biggest criticism I give students: everything comes in baby steps, and you can't just think you're going to get out of school and go right into something. Everybody starts somewhere. Give it time. And somebody said this to me once because I learned this actually when I was in seventh grade, and I took a, I took a, I I went to school with Vance and Justin. By the way, we all sat in the room and drew together and did composition with Marshall. And everything Marshall put up, we just draw and work our ass off on. And I knew those guys. They just went into games. I went into animation. That was the only difference. Vance is a super nice guy, and so is Justin. You know, um, back to the, the what I was just saying a minute ago. When I was in seventh grade, I took a framing class in construction. And I was talking to this guy, and this is what the guy said to me. He goes, I'm all, am I looking good? I was framing up using a nail gun. It was an ROP class. And the guy goes, says to me, he goes, do it for about 10 years and then you'll you'll be fine. I go, what? And I go, I want to go out and start working. I said, I want to earn money to buy a car. I'm like, 
he goes, what grade are you? I'm all seventh grade. You know, and he's all, he told me, he's like, you need to do this. He goes, if you do this for 10 years straight, you'll be a master at it and you'll make $100,000 a year, he told me. And I sat there and I looked at him, I'm all, 10 years, I'm all, I can sit around for 10 years and do this. I'm not going to do other things, right? And I walked away. But now I get what he said. Like, you go out and you go draw environments for 10 years and your speed goes up. You go out and draw props for, it doesn't have to be 10 years, but you don't understand what I'm saying, four or five years. You draw the human figure. You play the piano for five, seven years. You're going to be good at it. So it comes back to the practice, the designing. the the. I, that's why I was holding this up, drawing mileage, you know? Fill a jar with pencils. Fill up a whole bunch of sketchbooks and just sketch and draw. And I, it's funny because I see people at school, they take a class with me and then they never come back. And I'm like, why don't you come back and take more classes? And they're like, well, I don't know. I just, I, I did it and I was going to try to get a job. What areas in life can you get a job by doing things in, in 16 weeks? Four months. I'm going to use Raphael as an example. I'll use Ashley as <laughs> an example and Claire. All of them I had like a year, year and a half ago. Look at where their talent levels are now. Look at how much better of designers they're coming. So that's, that's you know, four months plus four months plus four months. So now they're at 12 months. A year and a half is only one, a year and a half of time of school is only 12 months of school. So in one year's time, look at how much better they become. So where are they going to be another mm -hmm. six months from now? They're going to It's be funny because I used to right? be that student that would take a class and at some point get discouraged and either drop or like never take a class again. And so it took a lot of growing. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And Here's your environment, Viviana. Fix your perspective. Nail that vanishing point. Have your focal point right there. That's it. I just I had to bring your wall over because your wall was all janky over here. You see it? So yes, I, I do. Huh? I said yes, I do. Okay, good. Because what I did is I drew that trace line to match it up there, and then I just added to it, and there it is. That's what you're going for. Oh, but there's one thing I forgot. Windows make this into a window or you could back here have a large window back there or if that's all the metal work area you could squeeze in a window here and here i've seen old factories like that in chicago or get rid of this and put a window there you need some area to have light coming in to light the scene so we need to get windows in there okay all right got so, it thank you Oh, my pleasure. Okay, it was a fun class getting to draw for you guys today. So let, let me go back to that thing because I, I'm telling you, I've seen this. It's like I, I've had students in my class and I like what Raphael just said because, you know, um, it, I, Raphael just said he was that kid in that class, right? Raphael, that you were never, you would take a class and then never, never go back. Oh, oh yeah. Like I was, I thought, I thought I was like hot shit you know but and and I was kind of like and thinking that I knew everything I needed to know so when new ideas were were shown to me I would reject them or it would just take me a long time to accept them, you know so yeah yeah I used to be that guy <laughs> when I got out of art school I was I was doing all this watercolor stuff I I thought I was like I'm gonna go be an illustrator I'm gonna just make a bunch of money I'm gonna work harder than everybody I got out there and I started looking for jobs <laughs> zero there's literally i got i did one children's book i did part of another one and then i found someone who knew someone that had me do a mural and i as like i was doing limited stuff and then i remember this girl i just graduated and this girl came back in and she's a teacher now her name is kim Dunell, and kim was animating kim comes in and she just says you know i'm she, i was there early she got there and, I'm, and she's telling me how she went to school and she could draw people and she got into doing key shots and she was an animator. And I just talked to her for a minute and I go, what do you make? And she goes, uh, and I said, if you don't mind me asking. She goes, no, I don't mind. She goes, uh, my first job was making $1,400 a week. And I'm sitting there going, wait a minute. I just did a children's book and I battled the guy over the children's book to get $1,500 for like eight illustrations. And you're making $1,400 a week? And then, and she goes, yeah. And she goes, and then on my next job, I made $1,700 a week. And then I'm like, okay, that that's it. I'm like, I just shifted my gears. 
And at that time, the games were sort of developing, the early games. And there was a really big company in Irvine that was doing games. They did, what's the one big shooter game with, you got to have the, the Gatlin gun and you'd kill all the, the dead. What was the, I forgot the name of it. It was the first. Uh, Team Fortress 2? Nope. It was the, one of the first. Left for Dead? Nope. Pre that. <laughs> oh, Doom. Doom. Thank you. Doom was released by the studio in Irvine. And then Justin and Vance were going to go over there. And I was tempted, but I, I really wasn't good with, with creatures yet. And I just was like, I really want to learn how to draw perspective. Because at first I wanted to be a board artist. So I was like, I want to learn how to do story. I love telling stories. I like camera angles. And I wanted to learn environments. So that's the direction I sort of went to. And those guys are doing characters, which opened the door for them to go do that in Irvine. And that's what they ended up doing. So um, I it was a culture shock to me at first to realize that that it was hard. So that's why when I run the program here, I started targeting. I, 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 I took all my knowledge of working in the industry for 18 years on all these projects. And I said, if I can prep students to do four things, they're going to do well and they're going to get jobs. And that was my personal belief. And I still... I've had people at school argue with me and go, that's not right. They need to know this or they need to do this. And I go, well, whatever the proof's in the pudding, because I have students, I have a boatload of students employed and they're usually employed because if you can draw a prop and you can draw an environment and can do a turn and you can do characters, that means you can go into boards. And if you learn staging and then you learn how to paint, you can do multiple jobs in one position. And what kept me gamefully employed was being able to work in Maya, being able to draw, I did props. I did, I you know, it, it big idea. I they put me in consumer products. I did toys and lunchbox and bed sheets and backpacks and kids' shoes. And I even I illustrated children's books. A big idea because I knew I had done a couple before. So, but you know, am I going to go out and make a living doing illustrating children's books? Not unless I pay my dues and make a name for myself like William Joyce or Chris Van Allsburg. And those are two of my favorite artists to look at because they had done very well. And then I remember Chris Van Allsburg when he then got um, later on sold the, the my brain's empty, he sold the movie to uh, Sony Pictures, The Christmas Story. Um, but I'd already seen his other stuff and he was amazing. And then there were other people I liked so in LA, we used to have two really big shops, Storyopolis and Every Picture Tells a Story. There are two big children's bookstores. I think they've both gone out of business now. I used to go there, open up books, and all I wanted to do was be an illustrator. And then I realized like, but that's not where the work is. People are not reading children's books in movie theaters. They're watching movies. So if I target the animation industry or part of the game industry, I'm going to do better and have a better chance. And part of my original goal was wanting to go into live action film. And I was sort of close to doing that because I started working on boards and then life happens, you know, I had kids. And when I had kids, you know, I decided like, I remember talking to my buddy, Joe, Joe Spadafer, and I made a comment. I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to have, a, I had an, had an interview at Pixar and an interview at DreamWorks. I knew what I was doing. I was going in the right, right, the right direction. And then I remember I had this debate, like, like my son was born in Chicago and we came back from Chicago here with him. And I remember thinking to myself, like my dad wasn't around for, for when I was a wrestler and doing stuff when I was in high school. And um, I also got in a lot of trouble when I was younger and I didn't want my son to be like that because I wasn't around and I was working all the time. And one day when I was talking to Joe about all this, we we're just talking to his friends, having a couple of, you know, a couple of whiskey, sipping on it, talking, on the phone and Joe goes, he said the smartest thing anyone had ever said to me at that time. And he goes, your son is not going to say, my dad worked at Pixar. My dad worked on this movie at DreamWorks. Your son is going to say, my dad was there to coach flag football. My dad was there to take me camping. My dad was there, showed me how to shoot targets with a 22. My dad showed me how to ride a quad and a dirt bike. That's the type of stuff. And that really stuck in my brain. And then from that point, I sort of shifted down the gear and thought like all I have to do is be happy having a job in animation doing anything I don't have to be in features and I'm just happy because it's a blessing to me and I get to take care of my kids and my family and go home to my wife and I get someone's going to pay me to draw all day and ever since that sort of epiphany for me everything was more about putting 100% into everything and not having to feel like I had to be on these big name projects and be on the and I saw that happen with other people Steven Silver had worked on Cloudy 
and was working on a couple other shows. And I think it hit him too. Like he realized like, man, I, I remember once talking to him and he was like, we went to lunch, him, Trevor, Bob Doucette, myself, or, and Steve's like, cause I like features, but man, having to revise a character 65 times on hair and jacket isn't what I thought it would be. It's not the same level of character design I thought it would be. And I heard other artists tell me that about feature. And I realized there were pros and cons to working in features or working in DVD or working in TV or working on game projects. And I, when I was at, at Big Idea, my art directed a, a video game project. And man, I was like pulling my hair out, dealing with people overseas. So all of this stuff comes back full circle sometimes and you you re-examine your life and your pathway in some sense. And for you guys, you're, you're in that early 20s to mid 20s where you're just like, I want to get a job. But then after you get a job, then you start realizing what do I need to strengthen and what direction do I want to go in my career? How do I get better? Don't burn bridges. Be polite to you see everyone you see. Stay away from negative people. Negative people just build holes and try to suck you in their negativity. And that's all they want to do. And that they never go far in life. They always end up in the same positions, right? So I learned that very quickly being around people in the industry that were negative or that were backstabbing. And still to this day, when I'm around negativity, I just go later, see ya. I'm going to go sit and draw at Starbucks all day and do my thing. And if you're going to be negative and, and, and say negative things about, about colleagues and about students and about um, uh, other artists and, and then go after people and attack them, have fun doing that because that's not going to get you anywhere in life. And a, a huge part of what that's why I talk about the confidence thing all the time. I, I have so many talented artists that come through the program, but man, I got so many people that have just like one or, or one or two or three level confidence out of 10. And it's like, you need to own oh. that and you need to believe in yourself and raise that number up. And then you keep working. And that's one thing I've always been sort of good at in some weird ways. I love being the underdog. I've always been an underdog. I grew up poor. Um, you know, my dad was an immigrant here. He didn't have anything. My mom didn't have much of an education. I watched my parents work their ass off from poverty to, to something. And that's, it's funny because that's even my wife is that same person. That's the same thing we share in each other. She came from a poor family. She worked her butt off and has worked for everything. So I go back. That's why you old guys always hear me talking about confidence and be kind to people, be nice, treat other people how you want to be treated and just keep that positive aurora around that. And if you do that and you believe in yourself, man, you'll watch your career just go up and go up and go up. And it's that simple, you know? So anyway, hope all that makes sense. It was a fun class today, guys. I hey, really love getting to draw on your stuff like this, you know, it's really fun. You know, Phil, mm -hmm. can I ask you one thing? Yeah. One thing that I got to wrap it up because everyone probably wants to go. It's like 10, 10. I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to yeah. go here and watch um, Netflix for eight hours. I think the hardest, one, yeah. one of the most challenging things for me, a class like this or just in general is not knowing when it's good enough because oftentimes like I'll see the reference material and it's like really good concept art or really fleshed out props. And it's, I got to put all that effort in and detail and all that. And it takes so much time and then you never get satisfied. And it, it's kind of, how do you get to the point where you're, you're satisfied with getting the work done at a proper speed? So you, like, you see the sketch I just you know, did for like, Viviana, like, right? I, the, I see yeah. pro, I see problems in it because I sketch it out really quick. I I see similar shapes in it. Let me go back and share my screen really quick. Yeah, share my crappy drawing, Phil. No, there's nothing wrong with your drawing. Your drawing was fine. <laughs> like I look at this now, taking a break. But the problem is, here's the hard thing about teaching: is I got a room of 15 people that all want crits, and I need to be able to go through and give them all crits, try to get their work pushed. Is it to another level to help them to guide them right so i look at this if i were to critique my own stuff i can imagine if i showed this to spooner he'd be like that's the same shape as that that's the same shape so right there but that's not a bad thing either edgar Payne used to do similar shapes and triangles to keep your eye focused on the composition so that could one area that could go work in another area part of me looks at this and go man if i make that a little bit bigger and then make this a little bit smaller 
that becomes the dominant read, right? Right. So yeah. you, you, you always look back and examine your work. And I think what, what to me, it was getting able to show work to people and getting critiques from people that were in the industry. So um, the other thing is walking away from your work, John. You work on it. You're looking at it for two, three hours. You get all caught into it. You have to walk away and come back and take another look at it and let it breathe and, and find out what it is, you know, that you did wrong or how you want to adjust, that, you know. And that's what I was kind of referencing, because, you know, like when I was working on my environment, I'm like, oh, man, it's not done until it's got all the detail. And you're like, no, you don't need all that detail no, for it to look good. I, I go I think I learned so much from working in tracing paper back in the day, sketching, because you like there are tree lines in the back. And they were just smeared silhouette shape and left alone. That's it. You know, and it, that's the hard thing about digital is when you're doing line with digital, you can't really do that, especially with the interior of a room. You can't do that. Um, you can get away with murder with blocking in big shapes out in an environment or an open area. It's like those guys on TikTok that do the paintings, like the Bob Ross paintings. I, I always laugh at that because they do the paintings in there. And sometimes I go on there and I put a comment, I go, can you do the interior of a room? And they won't. They'll fall apart because they don't know perspective. They don't know design. They don't know shape arrangement or anything like that. So there are certain, you know. So anyway, you. you but you. You got to, John. You. You're getting better. You've advanced. You've had a couple problems with your wrist. I've seen Alexander get better. I've seen Cormac. Everyone in this classroom has been getting better. But also in that same context, I've also noticed how. Um, some of you I've noticed, I, I'll just say, I say this in a good way. I'm going to use June as an example, and I'm going to use Ashley. When I first met June and Ashley, they were just like quiet, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, what are you doing? They're like a little, you know, freaked out. And now they, they really are starting to come out of their shell. They're getting more confident. You can see that progression in their work. And that's, you know, hopefully to me, that's the job is, a teacher in some weird way is my job is to try to install confidence. It's to try to be positive and guide you. It's to try to get you to believe in yourself and then show you all the, all the other art stuff because anyone that teaches knows that you could show everyone technique. You could show them like a, a, a golden book on how to design, but if you don't do that other stuff, then they go nowhere. So a, a huge part of teaching is getting people to believe in themselves and getting them to find their confidence. And people do it in their own ways. Some people do it in ripping people apart in critiques. I'm not a fan of that. Um, some people do it by, you know, by picking favorites and then not liking other students in the room. I'm not a fan of that either. To me, everybody's equal and everybody also comes up at different levels. I've seen students that don't apply themselves learn how to apply themselves and become very, very talented people in a short amount of time. And, you know, and then on the other end of that, I got to admit on, on that context, this semester I've, I've, I've had quite a few students that have either ADHD, a form of autism, and that's sort of a different approach. You have to figure out how to guide them, how to point them in the right direction. There are very functioning, extremely talented musicians and artists that are autistic and it's the same thing people with ADHD I have students that man if they don't apply themselves to a schedule that have ADHD no matter how talented are they're going to be a train wreck in the rest of their life so you got to take like all these factors and put them in together and you know it's funny I think I've told the story before I was a wrestling coach back in the day in high school right I coached when my younger brother went through I coached at Esperanza for about, I think about five years. And I never thought coaching would have anything to do. It has so much to do with art because everything in coaching was about taking these skinny little freshmen, teaching them technique and moves, which we call technique, building their mentality up to believe in themselves, getting them on a regiment of a good diet, getting them up to get focused on strength. So you had three factors to becoming a good athlete. It was the technique and it was the strength. It was the scheduling. And then the last one was the endurance. So you had four key factors. All those things are the exact same thing with artists too. Um, 
and and you couldn't get better at wrestling unless you went to practice. So that was a given. So like artists, you got to practice. You got to do the work. You don't do the work. You don't do the sketches. You're not going to get good. It's that simple. Um, and 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 all those other factors apply to art. So usually I come back. It's you know it's the scheduling, autism, ADHD. Depending on your level of autism and your ADHD, you could totally overcome it if you stay focused and you stay the path. And you got to remind yourself of all that. So you just, it's about applying yourself to things. And to me, that's the cool spectrum of, I've seen everybody in this wide spectrum of abilities. I've seen people with medium talent work really hard and do very well. I've seen people with really high talent throw it away because of their attitude and they think they're better than other people. Um, I've seen people, I had a guy, true story, I had a student once who was the most amazing digital painter I'd ever seen. And he got his fourth DUI one day and came into class. He told me he got his second DUI at the beginning and then he got a third DUI in the middle. And then one day he showed up to class like 30 minutes early when I was there. And he goes, Hey, Phil, I got it. I got to drop out. And I go, what's going on? And he goes, I got it. He just told me, he goes, I got a drinking problem and I got my fourth DUI. And he goes, I'm going away. I'm all, what do you mean you're going away? I didn't get it. And he goes, and he goes, after your second you have to do time. I haven't even had my trial for my third. And I just got my fourth. And he goes, I'm going away. The judge will put me in jail. And that's it. I never saw the kid again. True story, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's so people come from all these different backgrounds and you gotta, you gotta weed out your, your negatives, focus on the positive, get in the other, the other thing I'm sort of becoming a little bit big on is I get a lot of students that give me an excuse. And I, and then I come back and I go like, dude, Everybody's got excuses in life. Everyone does. You got to figure out if you're going to be an excuse giver or are you going to be someone who changes their excuses, fixes their life and come back and adjusts what they're doing. It's that simple. That's really how simple life is. So some people, they got to work, they got family to take care of. They got all kinds of things that goes on. So you got to balance your time between what you do, you know, and it's, it's, if you if you balance the schedule, you believe in yourself. That's why I tell you guys about eating healthy and staying that track, working out a little bit. Is you build your confidence because when you learn, if you don't love yourself inside, then you can't love other people, and you're not going to love your work. And and for some people, that love comes from being religious, you know, and and coming from that background. From for some people, that might be having lots of cats in the room. No, I'm just kidding. But no, but having animals, I mean, lots of people have animals and pets because it makes them feel more alive and more comfortable. There's nothing wrong with that. Cats are fulfilling. I, I they, yeah. <laughs> dogs are, dogs are your best friend though. Cats are fulfilling, but dogs are your best friend. Dogs go nowhere. They're always there. Anyway, all that stuff comes together, John. And that's for everybody. And you guys will see it. You'll see it as you go on in life. And one of my favorite things is when I get an email from a student four years later. And they go, man, all that stuff you talked about and being positive and doing the right thing, focusing on my work, believing in myself, not listening, especially this, not listening to the negative people around you that want to bring you down. There's always naysayers that, you know, you can't do that. You can't. That's why I, that's why I really don't like negative people. They're, they All they want to do is bring you to their level because they're too chicken shit and too tired and to burn out to try it themselves. So they get enjoyment on bringing down other people and trying to tear other people down. That's what negative people do. I, I, would, I discovered that when I was a kid and I discovered that because one of my buddies I grew up with is a narcissist and he's a negative guy. And narcissists love to bring down everyone else around them so they can elevate themselves up above other people. So you start to see that when you're out, you know, around doing things and it makes sense. Oh, are you guys going to go to uh, CTN? How much is it for the day? I might just go out there for the day. I just need to plan it. It's in two weeks. I yeah, it's in two weeks, though. So. I said we go. We could meet. We could have a hang out there for a little bit, you know? You know, I was going to say we grab a beer somewhere, but I don't know if you can do that there, you know? What is it? Um, I think what? you can, so. Yeah. Well, like four shots tequila and draw. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I better wrap it up. I know you guys need to go. It's getting close to 1025. I need to render this video. I probably won't get the video up tonight. 
if you guys don't mind it, I might post this video up on uh, on uh, YouTube because I really had a fun time drawing over your guys' work. It it really it's it, it's like getting to draw and sketch sometimes starting from nothing. But when I see your guys' work, my mind just like takes off like a robot and allows me to think about adding stuff in. So it was a really beneficial class today. What I would like to leave us with, two things. Number one, we have the drawing event. If you're not doing anything tomorrow, I will put it on YouTube as well um, so you can see it. We also have the drawing event in the morning, 9.30 a.m. It's free. Come hang out. We're going to draw some gnome stuff if you want to do that with us. I'll be up in early in the morning doing that too. And I'm trying to think what else I was going to say. Try to, you guys, try to finish your designs so we can move. We need to finish up the designs, get the design done, so then we can move into the next phase, which will be doing the trees. And we've done the before, now we'll be doing the after with the factory broke down with vegetation. We need to start moving into that because if we do that now, it gives us enough time to do the, uh, the tonal studies of both. Okay, so if you want to do the tonal study first of this one, you can. It's up to you if you feel like going for it. Um, or if you want to start working on the line version, either way, I'm fine with supporting both of those. Okay, All right. John, I know it feels distant, but there are people out there um, that do well. You just got to look around and look around you, find oh, somewhere. In I was also. Studios out there. When too. I was saying distant. I when I was saying distant, I was referring to the fact like everyone in class is like, yeah, we'll we'll go and meet up and have beers and stuff. I'm like, oh, I'm in a different state. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, even, even Alexander is out further away. And and, you know, I have, you know, and we have people in, in you know, North. Uh, I, my brain just went empty. We have people in up by San Gabriel Valley. I have people in Hemet. I have people out and I got people all over, which is pretty cool. You know what I mean? So anyway, everyone have a wonderful night. And um, just remember, just keep drawing, keep doing what you got to do and get your stuff done. And just re remember this. I say this in memory of a couple friends. Okay. Um, I I know somebody who got killed in in Israel recently. Okay. A buddy of mine had cancer and died. And just remember, you guys are all alive and you have life ahead of you and you're getting to draw. So look at those positives and look at how what a wonderful life that is. You know, you have these blessings in front of you. Keep those blessings and and look at what you have and you have these gifts and focus on your gifts and go forward with that. And you don't you're not having to worry about, you know, my wife's sister had breast cancer. Really, I think she was at stage three metaplastic carcinoma, barely made it, you know, um, and you, you look at, you know, my buddy Bobby got stomach cancer and he just died out of nowhere. My other bu buddy, Robbie Blackburn, I grew up with, he got cancer when we were in seventh grade, not cancer, he got um, lymphoma or whatever, and he passed. And, you know, and, and when you know people that have passed and stuff, you got to look at the bright side of life. Don't let the stress get you down. June, you mentioned you're going to be late today because your grandma fell. I, I, that doesn't bother me at all. Be happy you got a grandma that you can talk to, relate to. And all you guys, just look at the positive things. You get to draw all day. You get to sketch, you know? So don't fill your life, your life up with negative energy. Look at the positive things around you and just keep believing in yourself and doing what you got to do to get good work done, you know? So, you know, and, uh, and don't walk on railroad tracks. Don't jump out of airplanes and don't drive your car while drinking. You'll live to be a pretty long time, right? So... Everyone have a good night. I'll see you back on. If anyone needs to meet, I can jump on like Friday morning. I am layered tomorrow with meetings and stuff. So I'm not going to do much Friday. I will be at the drawing event. If you want to be there, I'd be happy to take a look at any of your work. But then I'll be back uh, to look at stuff like on Saturday. Okay. So hang in there. Keep working. Be positive. Stay the course. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care, guys. See you later. Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Good have night. a good one. Around. You have a good night. I can't even turn out to stop the video right now. It won't stop. There it is. It's hidden. Good night.